What up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Auto Tempest. Look, if you are looking for a car, whether you're trying to buy it or sell it, you need to know the market. And the best place to get the gauge of the whole market is autotempest.com. Why? Because all you have to do is put your search terms in one time, and Auto Tempest searches the entire internet. Cars.com, CarSoup, Cars Direct, not to mention Auto Trader, Craigslist, eBay, and Facebook Marketplace. Auto Tempest, and bring a trailer. Now that I mentioned it, bring a trailer as well. Auto Tempest searches all of it, you guys. Typing in search terms over and over is a thing of the past. Autotempest.com is here for you. They've been with us forever. We appreciate them, and they fund a bunch of other cool content around the YouTube space. So use autotempest.com when you're searching for your next new car. We're also brought to you by Dylan Optics Sunglasses. You know those awesome sunglasses that I am wearing in every video? Sometimes it's like plastic frames. Sometimes it's more aviator style. Sometimes it's like the wraparounds. Always with the matte finish lenses. That's Dylan Optics Sunglasses, guys. The NIR lens technology means that your eyes are protected from harmful UV rays. They're polarized. It makes it really, really easy to see, even after a long day in the sun. They're easy to clean, and they last a long time. They're they're pretty tough. I, I beat mine up pretty bad. That's not to say I haven't damaged them. I have, but <laughs> I treat mine pretty badly, and they take a beating, and they're, they're really, really good glasses. So if you go to our website, thesmokingtire.com, you click on that partners tab and there's Dylan Optics. If you use that link, we will send you a free t-shirt, Smoking Tire t-shirt, for every frame you purchase at uh, thesmokingtire.com under the partners tab. Dylan Optics sunglasses. Alrighty folks on this episode of the podcast, my friend Misha Mansoor is in studio. This dude is the guitarist for a band called Periphery. They're uh, they're really, really talented. He's an amazing guitar player and uh, he also happens to be a friend of mine who's really into cars. And so uh, for uh, for our first guest in two and a half months, in the actual studio, Misha Mansour of Periphery. You're fine. The microphone. Yeah, yeah, you're all right. You, it's not like your first time around a fucking microphone. Uh, and and this is handheld, you know. So. That's a good point. That's actually yeah, yeah. The Smoking Tire Podcast is here. What's up? <laughs> it just occurred to me uh, exactly why our guest Misha Mansour is on a handheld microphone. Originally, it was because we were going to put him in the corner for yeah. the coronavirus barrier. Some time out where I belong. But then I, I sold all our other microphone stands today. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the reason. That's the actual reason. Well, I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, it's not the reason, but there's no other reason. <laughs> there's no other reason. <laughs> no other reason. <laughs> That's Misha, good enough for me. Misha Mansour from the band Periphery is in the studio. Hello. 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 Thanks Vilcomen. for having me. Thanks for having me. We're Hello. doing like work together today. I yeah. think. Well, are, are, are we doing work? I mean, this is kind of work. It's it's as work as work gets right now. Let's make it fun. Where's the bourbon? You Let's gotta, make this fun, you know? You want to make it fun? Let's make the it fun. The bourbon's right there. You yeah. want the bourbon? Oh, yeah. shit. I didn't know you was going to fuck. All right. Let's make it fun. Let's That's, make it wait, less hang work. On. Hold on. That's the tequila. You finished the bourbon, actually. Did I? You did. How about tequila? We have vodka or tequila oh, hey, or beer. Please. Yeah. Can but so, sorry, but we, ha- we we have to get down to the important stuff here. This can't be work. It's definitely not work. And tequila, we're not trying to party. We're just trying to make it less work. So. Right. That's true. A beer is relaxing. Tequila is... It is. Oh, you didn't. Oh, is that Booker's? That's Booker's. Oh, Booker's. You fuck with Booker's? I do fuck well, with that's Booker's. Well, that's your glass. Oh, wow. That's your Booker. That's, that's the end of the bourbon, and it's yours. Oh, really? Yeah. But you're not you're not going to have some of that with me? No, I have another thing. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I have another thing. <laughs> I have my own thing. So, it's so all right. Name, <laughs> remain nameless. It's all right. Oh, does Zach, oh, does Zach want this? No, no, just close the curtain, yeah. We don't want to look at the fridge. We don't. It's We've ugly, gotten very it's, good at hiding It's a fridge. very ugly fridge. Uh, I was just, we were over at the new studio this morning talking with Jay and Nicole Ryan, who have, uh, they have a show, this couple, they bought the David Letterman set. Really? Yeah. I don't know where you get the David Letterman set, but they got it. Is up on Craigslist or something? I don't know. (laughs) He works in the industry somehow, and they assembled it in their house, and they made a studio, and they have a little talk show, and it's called like the Late Night Playset show, or something like that. And this uh, Jay 
uh, uh, the, the 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 man in the relationship uh, is like a really good like lighting and set designer. And look, like that picture right there is their living room. Like oh it God. looks like a sick like set. So I hired him, uh, them I suppose both of them, on a consultant basis to do the lighting design in our new studio. That's a that's a really good call. So what we're <laughs> gonna do? So we went over there earlier, and we're gonna we're gonna hang these rails on the side and clamp the lights to rails. That way we don't have to cut too many holes. It's great. I yeah. like it. Um, anyway, that's exciting. So new studio will be forthcoming. And then Misha and I we went to go peek around, and we saw Ricky. And Ricky said he swears two weeks, four weeks. <laughs> Which means four weeks. It means for four sure. weeks. For sure. It's contractor years, right? It's like dog years. But, totally. But in construction, four weeks is basically done. So that's cool. Yeah, pretty much. You done. know, pretty much done. Four weeks on five years. <laughs> it's not bad. It's like 1%. You're, you're there. It's basically you're there. One, it's basically <laughs> we can drink to that. You know? we can, I'll fucking water cheers you there on that. There we go. Oh, um, man. Nice to see you. We've hung out a few times uh, out on drives and on, drives. Uh, on the porch. Yep. And now, here we are in the studio. Here we are in the studio. Yes. The thing is- And you drove your beautiful Lamborghini to the studio, which I is did. very nice. I did. Uh, so, so, you know, I, I, I suppose I'm more well known for being a music guy, but- my my true love, which I shouldn't admit, my true love, the, <laughs> but not the first love. It is the first you, love. Did it you is drive a car before you could play guitar? No. Uh, actually, probably technically yes. Really? But yeah, because you know, like, um, I think we were on vacation. My parents are from Mauritius. We'd go to Mauritius, and they'd always have like. I think my dad had an Austin Morris manual rental. It was just a terrible car, <laughs> and like you know, in the driveway, he'd yeah. be, like teaching me how to drive that. Yeah, that was before. Uh, I mean, I had piano lessons or whatever when I was young. You started with, with piano? My mom forced me to take piano lessons because I was showing some musical aptitude at a young age, so I hated it. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely hated it. Why do it. they always pick an instrument that you have like no interest in? I was like, can I have a drum set? They're like, no. Well, that, <laughs> I, that I understand. I definitely <laughs> sympathize with and that then I, wanted, I wanted a guitar, and they're like, no, you, you want the piano. <laughs> I suppose it was easier to get the piano lessons because they could like, you know, just get a bunch of kids into a class. There's always yeah. piano teachers and whatever. Um, so I very reluctantly did piano lessons, and as a result, I don't really remember anything from that. There was a point in time where I was like halfway decent at piano, and that's all just gone, like a like a math test that you did forgotten. it not translate to uh, guitar at all. Like um, I, I it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I'm sure. I'm sure. You know what? I'm just being bitter because my mom was like, <laughs> "You'll you'll thank me when you're older." <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? She's probably when right. you're playing like, jazz you know at a I hotel. Do, right. When I was a kid, I used to get yelled at for cursing all the time. I yeah. got in trouble for cursing all the fucking time. My mom was like, "One day you're gonna have like a clean mouth, you know, and you're gonna see what talking proper." And I'm like, "Guess what, mom? I say fuck for a living. Yeah, people literally send me over the internet if I say fuck enough. Yeah, and if I say fuck <laughs> at somebody, they send me more money. <laughs> yeah, the, the system broke down. Yeah, it was uh, it was almost like a dare at that when point. I was in middle school and you they you, we had to learn an instrument and they had a no drum set no guitar policy you had to pick an, something else besides Why no guitar I understand the drum set because you know that's it's loud yeah logistics are difficult <laughs> but guitar is harmless it does seem good it does seem hard I electric think, guitar is quiet basically I know I went to super right yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, well you know we don't need to talk about that part I think they the were worried part, about having 50 kids wanted to play guitar which is and exactly nobody, what would happen yeah and then, and like nobody wants the oboe like, the question <laughs> is what would be so bad about that what I, if nothing. you had guitar symphony right that would be rad like 50 guitars playing a symphony i mean you know we've got three in our band which is already three too many but like you know it's, uh, <laughs> it's, there, there's probably a limit to that but yeah i think i think the actual problem is all 50 people would be like yeah electric guitar yeah right now right now you know what was the limit i think there was a uh i think it was like maybe did Spinal Tap get inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame oh, as yeah. a goof, I think? And they had like a hundred bass players on stage doing Big Bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I saw that. I, you know, and it's like. It was a record, I think. Like oh, most really? bass they, players. Like, they ever. like set a record at the same time. That's, all, that's amazing. Big, like Big of Bottom. Course, Spinal Tap would do that. That's, yeah, uh, that's it was amazing. hilarious. Uh, wait, so guitar then. When did you pick up a guitar? So I didn't pick up a guitar until I was like 13 or 14. I feel like that's late for someone that's as good at it as you are. Uh, I'm not that good at guitar, and it is a little bit late. But like, uh, you know, I I so so I'm Jewish, and uh, we we followed it pretty 
you know, strictly. Oh, and really? Was, yeah. Do you like, still? I didn't no, know was, because oh, of how strict we followed it. This is the problem. Keep, Parents, keep... don't fuck your kids up. Okay. Don't so, go too hard at the paint. It was, either way. They'll swing the other way. <laughs> it was it was pressure from my Austrian uh, grandmother who was, you know, close to us and all that. Mm -hmm. And and she was super religious. So we had like, we kept super kosher. Couldn't have cheeseburgers or pepperoni pizza. Had separate plates for meat and, and dairy, two wow. sinks and all that that fun stuff. We used to it's go. Just, kosher's so annoying. Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> the it's the worst, it's the worst. And when I was young, I really believed that like, you know, I remember going to a friend's house and they're like, we got pepperoni pizza. I'm like, well, that's my favorite food in the world. But um, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna like take a bite and see what happens. Cause I thought I'd be like struck down by lightning or something, you know? You thought like, the horns oh, would yeah. start growing, oh, dude. Yeah. I thought I thought bad things were gonna happen. Like you know? some Indiana Jones shit when they open the ark, your eyes just melt out. I mean, I didn't. That's know. how good pork tastes. Yeah, sometimes right? it feels like. And that. I was like, I was like, ah, worth it, whatever. I just oh, won't man, tell my that parents. That first slice of pepperoni pizza must have been good as fuck. So <laughs> it was, it was, it like got more strict. So it's like I had a taste of it, and it's like, oh, all of a sudden now you can't have this oh, anymore. The Lord giveth, the Lord have, taketh away. Right, right. <laughs> so, so the the beauty of it is that once you're once you have your bar mitzvah, you're a quote unquote a man, and yeah, you can yeah. make your own choices. So I was like, fuck it, I'm out of here. That's bitches. the good thing yeah. about being Jewish is usually you can convince them to leave you alone after your 13th birthday. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. I mean, like... Well, that's that's why there's so many Jewish lawyers because you learn about loopholes early. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, hang on a second. You I know. was already asking, you know, I was probably annoying my rabbi. I will say, like, they were really good about you know, inquisitive people because like I was definitely just like, hey man, like a lot of this stuff really isn't adding up for me. You know, and they're like, well, why don't you read this and write, read that? And I tried to take it seriously, whatever, especially towards the uh, the the bar mitzvah. But the beauty of the bar mitzvah is you get money. You're supposed to use on books, bro. We're on I the same none of page on, on Judaism here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My dad was literally like, listen. If you go through with this, because I was like, no, I don't want to do this. This is stupid. <laughs> He's like, all my friends are going to come to the party. They're all going to give you money. Yeah. <laughs> and he was right. They did. It, it worked out. And then he said, you don't have to go to temple anymore after your 13th yeah. birthday if you don't want to. And I fucking didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The second they're like, so you sure you don't want to come? I'm like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stay home and play drums. Thank you. you yeah. know, it, it's <laughs> like living in reverse where you go from, you like, you have a job, you finish the job, you get paid, and then you don't have to go there anymore. <laughs> and then, the, you know, it's like you get, a, you have a payday, and then yeah. you're retired that was yeah. my, fir that was my first retirement pension my your first retirement pension. Pension. <laughs> <laughs> so with my jew pension i bought a drum set and a guitar and drums were my first instrument um but uh you know that was like my first love but the the beauty of being a drummer by the way if you're ever thinking about starting a band be the drummer because then everyone just leaves their shit at your place no one wants to actually carry all the amps and guitars so yeah. i just inherited all this this uh equipment that's hilarious you know? <laughs> and that's actually how i started playing guitar uh more seriously like my sister had like this like uh classical that she was that she was playing with but that's obviously not really relevant to my interest as oh, you well. didn't want to go nylon string i mean i you thought that i thought mariachi? they were really cool it's just it's just a completely different style you're finger picking whatever yeah. and, and you know the the music i was listening to doesn't really translate to what that. were you listening to you know at that age i was like getting into corn and like sepultura and marilyn manson we're like the same age right you're really 30 i'm 30 i'm 35 i have okay, to think yeah. about it I'm, <laughs> I'm at that point where like i just don't think about birthdays i'm gonna be 36 in uh in october all right uh, well, yeah so and, same kind of same same range yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, like, was that what you were listening to? Rage Against the Machine, yes. Corn. Yes. Yeah, I didn't go all the way into Sepultura. I think I stopped at, like, Rada Matata. I yeah, think right, I right, stopped yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't, and then, what was it, uh, Soulfly was Soulfly, his other brand? Yep, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. I went to a couple of Ozfests, but that was about my okay. limit. That was pretty much my limit into, like, full metal. Yeah, I, I also, like, had friends who were in, like, you know, because back then it was just what your friends had, right? Yeah. Like, because they would lend me their CDs, right? And, you know, I... I wasn't getting like money from my parents or anything like that and I didn't really have like an allowance or anything so whatever music I got exposed to was just whatever my friends were lending me so yeah, yeah it was Metallica and like it's, it's interesting when I think about it because I'm like so much of like those formative years and they say like what you listen to at that age is really impactful yeah I haven't bought a CD since like college right. too. <laughs> I listen to exactly the same thing right. I listened to back then but like all that stuff was so arbitrary in a sense because just whatever my friends at the time happened to have and mm. were willing to lend me, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I think I had uh, I had a few corn albums. I was listening to Limp Biscuit at the oh, time, yeah. uh, back when that was a, a thing to listen to. Yeah, Dude, high, high school, I listened to that. I did. A kid yeah, that Zach times. and I used to party with up the road from here at the bar is in Limp Biscuit now. Oh really? What? Yeah. Remember Franco? Vaguely from Playa del Rey. He's the he's their DJ. 
now. DJ wow. Skeletor, I shit you not. Wow. And they tore the fuck out of like Eastern Europe and shit. They're oh, really? like massive in like Russia. And, I bet like, that's a good time. Yeah, yeah. So the trick is with with Europe and 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 Germany especially, but a lot of these a lot of these places like they never forget. They're like an elephant <laughs> over there. They they so like you your band could like fade into obscurity over here. Uh huh. You know, it's like that whole joke like my band's big in Europe. Yeah. But like that's what it is. It's legitimate because like wait you could maybe more, struggle. More like this. Sorry. Oh sorry, sorry. You could maybe struggle to like have a hundred people show up in the States and then you'll get like a guarantee for like 20 or 30 grand for like a festival. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So festival season will be really good for you there. Is uh, it, wait, is it different, a different taste in music? Is it, is it, what is it about a European audience that, that American audiences don't stick so around? I wouldn't, I wouldn't even generalize to European. I'd say Germany in particular. Oh, just Germany. So Germans, they're, for us, they've been a really tough market and, but we've really put a lot of work into it because we've been told, well, two things. One, they don't forget and two, they, I don't know if this is still true, but for the longest time, they bought more physical albums than anybody else. Hmm. So they were like the ones like kind of keeping it alive, despite the fact that everything was going digital. That's interesting. So I wonder why that is. I have no, because the Germans are weird. In the best way, but like German weird. people, get out of it. <laughs> you know? Explain to us your music industry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'd like to know. <laughs> but, but, what, but what's great is if you get them, then, yeah. then, they, then they're fans for life. So we put a lot of work into Germany, and that was a very tough market because they did not like us at first. They like the more straightforward wow. rock kind of stuff. That, so that really does explain Hasselhoff because it's like, <laughs> I, no, no, I mean like, it does. Like if they they hooked on him for whatever yeah. reason, and if he goes back there, they're like, yeah, the mic's here, please play. <laughs> well, look look at look at a, a band like Rammstein, right? Like that yeah. band is like the biggest thing on the planet, mm -hmm. and like their shows are, it's almost not even about the music. It's no, like it's everything's about the just fire. on fire. Yeah, yeah. Just I, fire. I, I, it's like you know, for me, it's just do 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 and fire. That's and just yeah, nothing really. That's, that's Rob You just described their like thirty year <laughs> career, right there. but but that but that works. And yeah. it, and it, and it and it's not one of those things where it's like oh, okay, like you know, that's the the eighth album that sounds like that that's on fire. It's like no, this is still great, and we're still going to come out, and you're going to be an even bigger band this year. And they're they're obviously incredibly talented, and they put on a great show. But the the German fans are showing up. I just so. think the energy it takes to be on. I mean, how hot has it got to be on the fucking stage in those suits and like full leathers <laughs> playing with fire all around you? It's got to be, yeah. be dying. The singer like sings an entire song on fire. Like, I think, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's like one of the things. It's, it's like, I think they're cool with it now. <laughs> this point, oh, they're God. just used to it now. <laughs> fire goes out. They're like, oh, is it kind of chilly in here? It's like, you Yo, know? guys, I heard, I heard Tommy Lee's drum kit uh, can go up in the air. It's like, oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I do a whole song on fire. <laughs> Four minutes, 47 seconds <laughs> on fire. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> wow, look at that stage. He's yeah. wearing, I mean, he's wearing wings that are shooting fire as yeah. he sings. That's amazing. So, so what, awesome. I heard, what I heard Super is, awesome. I think, I, I hope I'm not wrong about this, but I, I think one of them or all of them own the pyro company that they sort of rent That from, makes 100% sense. And then they rent, sense. they rent it out to all the other bands. Yeah. So they make a ton of money just off of that. That's genius. a good, really good um, idea. Of because, course you rent your pyro gear from Rammstein. Of course. <laughs> Why would you not? They'll train you. <laughs> you know? Well, who, if who, I wanted to rent a tiger, I'm calling Siegfried. Especially now. R.I.P. Roy. Oh, I know who I'd call. But it wouldn't be Carol oh, yeah. Baskin. No. no. Someone, who, <laughs> someone I can pay in meth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad for Roy Horn. He died over the weekend. And, and it was just from Siegfried and Roy. And it, all the newspaper articles were just like, the dark haired one. And it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> 40 years and it's just the dark haired one. Well, well because, they wore the same outfit. <laughs> they did the same. I mean, I guess. You yeah. Know. They lived in the same houses Look, and shit. Meanwhile, not, not everyone can fault. tell you exactly what Joe Exotic looks like. That's true. Right? I can, I can describe that guy perfectly. <laughs> Wait, is that, um, that's not a CGI, that's a real image, right? Yeah. He's wearing, what is that coat made of? Go back, that coat looks metal. like it's made of metal. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I Fucking think, the song that he does on fire, he wears like a fire awesome. suit. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, that is one of the greatest metal music images I've seen in a really right. long time. If you had to describe <laughs> metal to an alien, you know, you'd be like, that. Uh, it, it's logical conclusion happens when the <laughs> singer is literally on fire or when the singer actually murders all of his other bandmates. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> like Lilu Dallas metal. <laughs> what is the most metal thing that could happen? Yeah, right. What was that band where the guy murdered all of them? The oh, Swedish band, uh, Mayhem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, the, and then he made the 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 cover, the next album, the the picture of the dude murdered. Yeah, and it's like, that's black metal. That's a wow, that's, that's a whole fucked. other. 
that's a whole other sort of sect right there, you know. Yeah. We're, we're we're in it to have fun, man. <laughs> we're we're having it's a good more time like at our fun show. Fun metal. <laughs> there, there, there's there's black metal. So black metal is interesting because there's there's people who get it in into it aesthetically and do the corpse pain and all that. Because there's this whole like that mayhem era and all that. They're, people are very serious. They were very upset with Christians and the church. It was their sort of way to rebel against mm-hmm. that, right? But uh, but then there's people who genuinely got into it probably as fans and just enjoyed the aesthetic and they're like you know but no, let's not burn the churches and this go to jail. This was great until they literally started murdering each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, you know, and they would burn churches and they went to jail and like it's like it's like wow. a whole thing. There was a whole phase of, of that uh, in Norway. So like, uh, and it's pretty it's a pretty dark part of that that black metal history. But then there's a bunch of bands that just do it for fun. But then there's also bands that still kind of do it for real. Like there's this band Watain that they like. They need the stage to smell like death before they go on every night. And they bring they bring like pigs, corpses. I have a bunch of friends who've like worked with them. Yeah. Wow. Like I don't, a full I don't know them experience. personally, but I have a bunch of friends who've worked with them and they've told me. It's like, yeah, they're like if you open their trailer, you need to have like vapor rub, like Vicks oh vapor rub, because it smells like death and like It's like people, method metal. Yeah. yeah it's, no, they really need to be in the movie. Apparently they're super nice guys too. But Dude, like, you it's gotta like, get the tour rider. We right? have to see the tour rider. Right. I, I don't they think they demand <laughs> six pig corpses be they, No, they bring they bring the pig corpses, you know. They bring <laughs> They bring Old bacon. They're rotting in the in that the trailer is all tour. You know, so crazy. It is. That's uh. So that's the that's one extreme. So my band Periphery for for those of you who don't know, uh, we're not like that at all. Don't you guys worry. don't have pig corpses. No, no, we do. We we, we, we kind of we kind of stop just short of that. You know, we're like maybe maybe we'll just stick to like you know lights, and uh and smoke. What do you what what genre do would you put yourself into? Um, so, you know, we, we, we call ourselves sort of progressive metal, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, you mix metal with like progressive music. It's, it's music for nerds, <laughs> uh, uh, music for like, you know, kind of angry nerds though, or like energetic nerds. Energetic. Yeah, I energetic wouldn't, I wouldn't nerds. say we're angry at energetic all, nerds. you know, we have a good time on stage and, and it's all about like kind of having a good time. But, uh, but you know, our, our last album is like, it's called Hail Stan. Uh, that implies awesome. like many like, things. Just yeah, those well, two it's just like it was supposed. I, I'm pretty sure the only reason I wanted to do it was so that I could, in every interview, tell people our album was called "Hail Satan." And then when they say it's actually says "Hail Stan," I could just get fake mad about it <laughs> and be like, "Well, I'm firing our our manager right now." Dude, that's so that, funny. That's such a bad typo. Uh, All right. And our manager hated like on the, album the album name. cover. Yeah, yeah. Our our, our manager oh, this album cover. He was like, he was he like wrote us a letter being like, "Look, like." You know, I, I feel like I have to save my piece. I just think this is the dumbest name ever. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, that's unfortunately why we're going to call our album. We're super proud of this album. We've put so much work into it. So it needs to have like the dumbest name ever. Uh, uh, and we'll put like a Baphomet so on everything. Great. <laughs> uh, just have like a typo of, of Hail Satan on the front. I don't know. Why else? Why else would you go through the music industry and deal with all this torture if you don't get to have these little moments? Dude, you know? I think the name Hail Stan is a hilarious album name. <laughs> I, yeah. really, I really well, get yeah. at a lot of things about it. I think it's a <laughs> really like, funny this, album. This name. looks like a Bloodhound Gang album title because yeah. like, it's right. so funny. It's so good. Our fans loved it. So even our manager, our manager is awesome. We love him. And like even after the fact, he was like, okay, well, I still hate it but i get it now <laughs> when he saw our fans react to it he was worried it was actually gonna work against us i was like nah don't worry like no they'll we, get, we, they we, get we know we know our guys like yeah. they'll, they'll love it the you closer know? you can get to like a uh like a morty and rick album title yeah. is the but it's not gonna go better yeah yeah that's, I mean, that's, that's basically that's basically did I just say it. morty and rick you did. sorry rick and morty i don't uh, you know it's been a long quarantine you know? I have so many people that get me to try to watch Rick and Morty. So you have funny. No idea. So it's a it's a good show, but it's like one of those things where uh, the the fan base may be ruining the product. What's the equivalent of that car? Tesla. Tesla. <laughs> it's the Tesla of shows. It is. Actually, no. That, that's oh god, that's perfect. Yeah. You're, he's good. He's the best. Yeah. It's it's the Tesla Model Three performance of shows <laughs> because it's genuinely a a, a, a great show. And like I'm almost ashamed to let people know that I enjoy it now. That's very funny, you know. <laughs> and I don't want to have a con. I, I would like to watch it and not have a conversation with people about the fact that I watch it. Yeah, yeah. And that that's the end of it. Yeah, because I, now I, it's just like, too much. I love it, but when when the sauce thing happened and they, you know, <laughs> yeah. and people are like, are people really waiting in line? For this stuff, I'm like, well, some people are, but but for the rest of us, it's just a really funny show with like a good joke density, and they can kind of do whatever they want because they're just almost like superheroes, but you know, quote human. That's really great. And like, yeah, but people are waiting in line for McDonald's sauce. Like, I, I know there's some bad apples. <laughs> Look, I get it. Some people don't understand why the Model Y's trunk design is flawed, but we think other than that, it's a really good car. You know? <laughs> That's really fucking funny. Yeah, the, uh, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. Anyone. 
I tried. I promise, I tried to watch it. I did watch like four episodes, and I did find them funny. But for some reason, I just didn't continue. Uh, but whenever someone tries to like explain to me a premise of an episode or something, or like you got to see it, it just comes out like a fucking disaster. Yeah, it's probably the worst mouth. show to try to explain to someone. <laughs> um, it'd be it'd be like explaining to a petrol head why the Model Three performance is sick. <laughs> you'd be like, dude. You just gotta drive it. You yeah. Just gotta drive it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, you know, I, there's a lot of people. I have a hard time explaining um, how a, a five thousand pound Porsche Taycan Turbo can be, you know, crazy fun. Right. Yeah. Right. But it, but it's heavy. I don't get it. Well, it's still fun. Mm -hmm. it, it's technology. Yeah. I mean, I mean, fucking Kevin you... Zinger got in my head. I started thinking about that cumulative thing that we were talking about. Kevin, you know, have you seen the Zinger thing? No. Three D printed car. Oh, it's pretty crazy. Okay, it's, I mean that's a that's a logical next step. Yeah, right? but not just three D printed car. It's a it's a thirteen hundred horsepower. <laughs> I mean, oh no no no! I have seen. It. Yeah, Sorry, I didn't. You I sit didn't, you I sit one uh, behind the other in line seating. I didn't know that. It's no. I just it's saw this from the outside. Pretty off the wall. And this dude was talking. The guy, the CEO of the company, Kevin. This guy was on the show yesterday, and he was telling us about the you know the world's impression of the electric vehicle as being clean where the cumulative impact of building servicing maintaining running and disposing evs compared to uh certain other things is actually quite a dirty process yeah and so he's got this thing that's a uh, it's 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 gas and it's a hybrid right gas engine in the back mm -hmm. hybrid in the front uh, like the small electric battery in the front interesting and apparently he runs it on this fuel that is made from a process that takes CO2 from the atmosphere and hydrogen from the atmosphere, it turns it into methanol, which is then put into the car and burned. And because you've taken the CO2 from the atmosphere to put in the fuel, that when the CO2 comes back out the ass end of the car, it's perfectly carbon neutral. Right. <laughs> is that is that real? Does that work? I mean, I don't have the wherewithal to question that scientifically. I would be interested to see if there are anyone who listens to our show that does. But it certainly sounds like it has premise. I mean, I, I don't know. It seems pretty fucking cool. Yeah. The car works. Very the, car, cool. the car runs and drives. The okay, car works. It, run, it runs and drives. I mean, yeah, at, yeah, least, car at least someone's looking, you know, because that, that argument of like, you know, is it really cleaner, I think is sort of the, the well thought out argument maybe against the electric car currently. Well, well there's two arguments. He's Because he, there's an old one that was called like the long tailpipe argument, which they have disproven. And that was like the amount of energy it takes to create the electricity that goes into the car is worse than creating gasoline per mm. like per unit. And and Jason Sinfinski on Engineering Explained did a really good video about this, but that for a long time was the the counter argument to EVs put forward. And, and he's pointing out something that I think people probably have thought about in some ways like, well, no, it's like, it's all the rare metals that go into batteries. It's all the rare metals that go into materials. Like we all know that mi mining stuff is a dirty business right, and there's exactly. so much more of those rare things that go into electronics. And then you than, have to dispose you know, I, of them when right. they're done. And how do we even do that? And that, then you that was the argument the I hadn't heard for the longest yeah. time. And then when I heard, it, I was like, okay, that, that that's the first time I've heard an argument that kind of makes sense. He said, there's a new next year, there's a new EV Cadillac Escalade coming out with a 200 kilowatt hour battery. He said that driving around in that is like driving around in three Honda Accords at once. <laughs> Seriously, that is the amount of energy that it takes to, to operate that. Well, I mean, like, I, I can't even imagine how much that weighs, right? It's going to be like 8,000 pounds. Right? It's going to be enormous. Like, yeah. it's, uh, it, th this weight thing is one of these things. Like, cars are obviously getting bigger and heavier, but then this is going to be the next, like, jump because the batteries weigh so much. Yeah. And, like... I don't know. I feel like there's also something that no one's really addressed yet. Maybe it's not been enough of a problem, but when these things catch fire, it's like really, really bad. <laughs> it's really, really bad. <laughs> really bad. It is really bad. And it's and it's you know like there's that famous uh, the the what the Rimac that uh, Richard Hammond crashed, mm -hmm. which like I think was on fire for six days or something like that. Because <laughs> they're basically saying every subsequent cell, because it's sort of arranged serially, was just catch fire. They put one out and then they, and there's six thousand cells or something like that. I don't know the exact details of that, but I've heard of these of ev fires that burn very hot and very long right. and you need special processes to put them out that not all fire departments are equipped to right. handle and if all of a sudden well all of a sudden is a stupid thing because it clearly wouldn't happen all of a sudden but if everyone switched to an ev you would have to switch well that was that was kevin's point the snowball effect right of 
infrastructure to charge it, infrastructure to mine them, infrastructure to build them. They're heavier, so we need heavier duty tires and heavier duty brakes and then maybe even better roads and like on and on and on and on and on. And the snowball of that versus maybe finding a cleaner fuel to run through cleaner internal combustion engines right. where the vehicles can be lighter and then researching materials to make things the lightest they could possibly be which is what his 3d printing thing is about they have this uh they have like suspension components that are like what is it zach 40 or 50 percent lighter than the equivalent oh my God. they're crazy they're crazy the equivalent like, from another menu from a stamped suspension component wow. I mean, dude i ridiculous. picked up an a-arm down there like, I'm not kidding. It weighed as much as these headphones. Wow. The control arm, because it was made out of, you know, whatever, like, titanium, 3D aluminum, printed 3D printed titanium. alloy they have. And I That's just, not, so I you just started have the resource laughing. and you just print. And, and this also would mean for, for parts and, and whatever, you could just print them up. You yeah. Have to wait for them. You, only, like, you don't need to build tooling. You just right. build a tool yeah. that prints anything. Yeah. It, it seems like really neat. I, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have the ability to punch holes in his theories. Yeah. I don't know enough but to. Homie's yeah, got either. a factory and running, driving cars and. Uh, you know, it that's seems, awesome. Seems pretty cool. Yeah, cool. <laughs> well, now he becomes the disruptor to the disruptor because yeah. you know, like, and I like these guys because they're coming up with things like, oh, well, you know, what about this? And, and they're then, local. Yeah, they're right here. Oh, really? They're in Torrance. Oh, well, yeah. like that. I thought it was like Eastern Europe or something. No, no, right? no. Well, right, yeah, the name. <laughs> the right? name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, uh, it's like Hungarian. It's Hungarian. That's yeah. that, that's awesome. I the the name uh, like, I had to be honest. If my name was Zinger with a CZ at the beginning of it. I might not name the company. Yeah, that. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to say that to the guy, but I got to You got to be like, man, my name is kind of hard to pronounce. Maybe well, I a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys are like engineers. Yeah. They're really, really smart, and then they just don't see the other side of it, like the marketing side of it. Maybe and it's yeah. just like it's like, what's wrong with that? That's I'll my tell name. you what, though, I really want to drive the car. I yeah. really want to drive that car. That I'd like to be right behind you. Because <laughs> apparently that's where I'll be. Yeah. I mean, that's nuts, man. That's uh, yeah. that, super cool. The, the 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 other side of this, which I'm sure you've talked about ad nauseum, but I'm I'm curious to see what your take is. Is I feel like cars are already too fast for the yeah. average person, yeah. and the level of ed education is basically non-existent. Um, yes. When I think back to my driving test and what it what it consisted of, it's hilarious that anyone <laughs> let me on the road. Oh, yeah. um, but I was, you know, driving an Acura MDX, an O2 MDX. So like, how bad could I get in trouble in that? But like, you could also get into like a Hellcat or yeah. the new C8 or yeah. like the twin turbo C8 that's going to come out that the I thousand horsepower C8 that's going to come out and then that's going to be slow because you're going to have this out there doing 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds I know, and this like thing looks nuts I, I agree with you I think I think the fact that you can get into a car that will run a sub 11 quarter mile and all that that takes is money you know there's no licensing or testing or there isn't even any mandatory training if if I was the manufacturer of car of a car like that when I first got out of a 720 for the first time I went back to the McLaren people and I went what kind of driver training do you offer before <laughs> right. letting people take this and they go well you know we include like two days of like whatever you know is an option you know and I go but nothing like mandatory and they're like no and I go I go, guys, this is not not a safe thing. It's a recipe for disaster. You, this is you can't just sell this to somebody and just go, here you go. It's it runs nines. Like <laughs> And that car that car is a it can be a handful, you know? Like well, it can be if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, sell one of them. And a lot right of people love to do that traction control off thing for some reason. They get brave. Uh, on the roads, and I'm like, why would you do that? I don't, I don't know. You, know, you got that friend who turns off the trash control when they go to the grocery store? No, like, I don't have that friend. That I don't, I don't make friends with those people because I'm just like used to. Which <laughs> car? What are we talking about? <laughs> Our first but cameraman, Tom Morningstar, would do that. He would turn off trash control, go to the grocery store, go, Tom. What are you getting? What are you getting? Uh, out of which, <laughs> which corner will you be breaking traction on? Because just you want so to I can taste. Hold tighter. Depending on the car, you just want to taste. <laughs> sure, if you know, but but you're probably talking about someone who can drive. I'm, I'm talking about the people who wrap their cars around trees. Well, I think and, a lot of people you know. they just you watch a lot of videos about people like Harris and the other guys in the in the UK. They do a lot of like street slides for photos yeah and you watch that stuff and you're like I, I just i can do that i can do that i've watched a lot of videos too and you're like no no they didn't they didn't watch a lot of videos they do a lot of driving and i was like yeah, yeah, yeah. i watched a lot of and then, but, you, but you know what's hilarious is now pretty much every new fast car has it built into their traction control to let you do that mm -hmm. safely where you just yeah. keep your hands up it's amazing and you'll be fine you they, know? yeah a lot of the cars have a drift a drift you can get mode. slip angle on yeah. a 720s so yeah. easily it you gives know? you uh, like four seconds and yeah then, and then it brings it back 
Safely. A lot can happen in four yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Ooh. For sure. I think Ferrari does it, But too. we've driven cars. I think, like, like track mode on the Corvettes is really good at mm-hmm. giving you, like, a few degrees mm-hmm. and a little... And it's more like if you're getting a little wheel spin on exit, it doesn't it doesn't curtail it a ton. Right. It doesn't snap it back, but yeah. it's just like, you're, you're just, you're cornering fine. It's Yeah. yeah. No, the but software it, is good, but look, there's still, you can still go zero to 150 in like nine seconds inside some of these things. The problem is that those cars also, I mean, even the, the Performante, like they, they just, um, they, they make speed feel so insignificant. Like yeah. going, I've gone pretty fast in that car and, I, and I'll say like, after you're going like 120, it doesn't, feel that different no there's nothing like the car doesn't get light there's nothing it feels stable I, mean, I, I think at the end of the day it's a german car so it's built for the autobahn because they're like oh people should be oh, able yeah. to drive this at top speed every day so the damn thing's planted and it's just like you forget how fast you're going and that's a that's a problem because in in more normal cars when you're approaching those speeds you're like oh, okay mm-hmm. yeah you know? for sure and there's a there's a level of fear but it's like you get this like false sense of confidence at speed well because you know that you're not at at the end of its range yet like if you're driving a Corolla and you're five miles an hour off from its top speed you can kind of tell and also took you a while to get there yeah right yeah. you're, you're <laughs> sitting <laughs> there <laughs> you're really sitting there going oh man I'm going fast a long time is there a cop there might be a cop I've what's around the corner i for 36 seconds <laughs> <laughs> that's different than if you're flat in, in you know in your car from I think from 120 to like 160 ish Really fast cars just always kind of it feels about the same. Just yep. things go by quicker. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. yep. And then it gets interesting. And 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 the the thing is, yeah, you just become sort of unaware of how fast you're accelerating. So you're like, this is really fun. Oh my god, I'm doing 130. You know, like, and it's it's <laughs> weird. I've had you know that that sense of like I've had more fun winding out, you know, a really engaging 400 horsepower car you know, rowing through the gears than I have, you know, launching a 720, you know, and just, and just going as fast as I can. Yeah. I, 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 even like I had that more, that little Morgan plus four thing. Like I actually had, I, you know, I don't want to just recite these slow car, fast tropes, but like I actually had more fun in, in that little Morgan than I have in a lot of really, really fast stuff. Yeah. Oh, look at that thing. That's fucking fantastic. I mean, it's amazing that someone made that and is selling that today. <laughs> it's brand in 2020. new. You know, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's a brand, brand new car, car that you can go out, go out and buy it like that. And not only can, year, I, you can you can you explain to me because I don't fully understand what it's got wood as part of the chassis or no or? not the chassis there's the, there's a there, this one has a, a an old school like ladder frame chassis like okay. two main rails like connected. It then has some steel uprights that has wood sort of mounting okay. forms on them and then aluminum body panels on the wood. And the wood is an insulator from vibration, from heat. It's actually quite strong. There you, there you can see it. And then and it and it keeps the aluminum of the body and the steel of the chassis from interacting with each other and corroding. So you can okay. see there's, it looks like, and Matt, you can explain this better because you've been there, but it, it seems like they have some aluminum body chassis cars where the wood kind of does what you're saying, it dampens stuff, and then they have some real old stuff. Actually, oh, this is a better example of the dash and, and whatnot. Yeah, so yeah. That, that bit there that we're looking at basically is a mounting structure for the body to go onto. Right, the, so you literally like screw the aluminum panels yeah. and stuff like that. You know, that. Misha, you, you like having plants in your house, right? <laughs> <laughs> what, what if you could take the plants with you when you went to work? Yeah, sold. Yeah, yeah. The, the wood thing. Yeah. So their new car uh, will have less wood. <laughs> I, I, I love it's how cool, you man. described this. I think you said it was, you know, it's definitely like the perfect fifth car. Yeah, I stole, <laughs> I stole that from Alex Roy. I, I don't want to take full credit. That was originally an Alex Roy line. But that's, and it's that's completely beautiful. correct. It is. It's right. Because you're, you know, your you're number one car, right? You, your first car is either going to be a daily driver or a, you know, a fun daily driver, right? Then your second car is either going to be, for me, something a little older and crazier for you. It's your little your little supercar out there, your performante. Third car, now you do maybe a little vintage. Fourth car might be a truck or something like that, or a track car. And this is your fifth car. That's the fifth mm-hmm. car? Yep. Makes sense. It yeah. would be my fifth car. I'd drive the shit out of one if I had it, though. I would, right? I'd use it every sunny day if well, I had it. Well, out here, you can do it whenever you want. Hell yeah. You don't have to worry about it. And there's, actually, no top, there's no top or anything. There is a top. There is a top. Yes. Okay. There, can you pull up the picture, Zach? I think you could probably see it. The top is down. 
There is a, a you know a canvas. Is it built into the car? Or do you have to sort of bring it with you and commit to it? Uh, no. Good question. It's built into the car. Oh wow! It's manual and it's fairly shanty, but it's there all the time. The windows you have to commit to. <laughs> the window, either you physically put the windows, and I'm talking about like this fucking plastic panel. You take it and put it on and screw it in. Wow! Or you leave it at home. Okay. I left the windows in my garage for the entire week I had the car. Yeah, you didn't need it. Commitment. You didn't need it. Yeah. You commit to it. Yeah. Um, I, but, but I, but I do, I do love the fact that that someone is putting that out nowadays when you have you know the crazy 3, 3D printed car totally. that's also coming out. You know? Yeah, I, wonder, I bet Morgan would be a great company to bring 3D printing to because there's no reason that you couldn't incorporate 3D printing into Morgan's styling Can and ethos. Can you 3D print wood? True. <laughs> I think na nature does that for you, right? <laughs> and then you just kind of carve it away. <laughs> just, yeah, you're actually, overcomplicating what's a very simple process, actually. I was watching that um, on Netflix. I'm really out of fucking shit to watch. And I think there's, there's something on Crazy Homes. I think it might just be called Homes. And this woman in uh, Bali made this fucking castle out of bamboo oh really castle it's enormous it's multiple stories it's like it's is so gorgeous and uh and she said the entire all of the bamboo to grow this entire place to build this entire place was grown in four years yeah because it grows really grows really fast, fast right yeah, yeah that makes yeah. sense that's really cool that's that that's that's, um, that's interesting so yeah you can either uh naturally 3d print your nature, stuff or uh nature 3d print. <laughs> that'd be funny i'm gonna start a farm and call it nature's 3d, <laughs> nature's 3D printer. Printer. <laughs> yeah matt ferris 3d printing technology that's how you get nerds like me to be that's like great. more 3D uh, print with the sun man. <laughs> <laughs> we can 3d print balsa we can 3d print oak redwood all kinds of stuff 3D yeah print whatever that's in that pipe there you, you can't you see know? the robot you can't see the robot i'll, just, I'm gonna go, I'll go get the wood that was printed <laughs> that's hilarious do you want it like a two by four or what do you want <laughs> four by four <laughs> i do feel like that's a perfect car for you though because you're blessed to get these like awesome press cars all the time you don't mm -hmm. need you know i get my right. supercar kicks i have to go out and buy them you get I a know. new crazy car every week so, so curiosities are the only thing that that are left you, you know? are absolutely right and i only have curiosities in yeah. my garage i have a lifted 911 an old lamborghini a stupid japanese van i only have weird shit and that's the only thing that'll make you happy anymore i think because you know you, you you've driven everything on the planet and then you're we'll being see. given everything else that you haven't <laughs> driven <laughs> so far thanks jesus I'm gonna be selling an asshole. he's got he's got um, no 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 he's got the job i want i would no, trade people it people just you know what the thing is people always are like well what would you get and i'm like a, a lifted 1987 yeah you're the worst and they're person like, no ask. no but, and i'm like D well don't ask me what i'd get if you want to know what you should get tell yeah. me what you fucking need don't yeah. ask me what i'd get i'd get the dumbest possible thing paint it fucking green and have uh, like hotel rug carpet <laughs> yeah there are journalists that don't own cars because yeah. they get cars so regularly you don't need like, to own a car right. and you know i mean there's tropes there are there are times i don't have a car a press car there are legitimate automotive journalists who do like the circuit like the press launch circuit and not they're not guys who write for road and track or motor trend they're the, they're guys who write for the denver weekly news whatever whatever that paper's called they write the auto column for that paper that oh. guy he might or might not be into cars but that guy's got two or three press cars in his driveway at all times. His wife, his daughter are both driving press cars, and he's going around the world on press launch, one press launch after another, driving some probably boring ass cars. I mean, going there and being put in some really beautiful hotel and going, Jesus, what do I say about the fucking Kia Optima? I need 1,200 <laughs> words on this. But his wife and kid are at home driving press cars. That's liter That's a thing that happens wow. regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, like, I feel like you're laying me into a loophole. And Johnny's I like loopholes. got like three press cars in his driveway right now. Like he's, he's one, he has one ass. What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> what does he have right now? He's got a 911 Turbo. Oh, he's still got that. Yeah, he's, he's been cab. bogarting that thing for a month. I was just did Spike's podcast yesterday. And he's Spike in love was with like, that car. Fucking Johnny's got the Turbo. <laughs> but but he he I know I know you 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 were somewhat critical. I, I get your point. But he lo he adores that car. Well, look, I adore it too. But but my point is that unless you are of the a driver of drivers unless you have the perfect conditions of available to you in empty roads there's almost no difference in feel between the turbo and the s a 450 horsepower car and a 650 horsepower car 
are only really different in the you last. Mean the, the GTS and the turbo. Yeah, you know, the the S oh, and the turbo. The, 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 the Carrera the, S and the, 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 and the okay, turbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, they're only different in the last twenty percent of the pedal. Yeah, you know what I mean. Which okay, yes, that that's worth something. Well, there's also the launch party trick, you know, more. like which is the yeah, but the, but, but the, the regular ones do launch party trick too. Do, yeah, the, and the the yeah, S but just so like two point five seconds. Like I'm not arguing bro, but that, the S but does I get like it. Three O, it's it's not that much. No, it's different. narrowing. I think is because it's I think it is. If, it is you know, it back is. in like nine nine six days, Carrera was just you know flat six naturally aspirated, and now everything's just kind of narrowing because everything's getting uh, it's all the same. Well, I did I looked this up for my story, Zach. Back in the Day, the the manually shifted 996 turbo was 1.2 seconds faster in the quarter mile than the manually shifted 996 Carrera. That's less than I was. It's expecting. less than you would That's think. Way right? less. It's less than you think. Wow. But it's but and it's the same now, except that the regular the regular S is a half a second faster than the old turbo. You know what I mean? So like a regular Carrera S runs like an eleven one com- compared to like a ten four in the turbo. Now that is that a difference worth paying for? Sure, if you care. But an eleven one is a fucking fast car. You know, it, it's everybody. interesting. <laughs> it's interesting you say that. So I have a buddy who works for Porsche. He like works on their um their traction control over in uh, I think oh, that's an interesting gig. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a really nice guy. And whenever whenever my band comes out, uh, he brings cars for me to check out. Or uh, sick. I wasn't allowed to drive this one, um, but uh, but he took me for a ride, and it was a it was just uh, I think it was a two S uh, convertible, mm-hmm. right? So I'd be like, oh, this is the looser, heavier one, right? And I was blown away. I was like, dude, this thing is super car fast. Yeah, like this thing is accelerates in the way that my Lambo accelerates, and, and I was like, this is the S. Yeah, and it's a convertible, and. You know, we, we we went on the autobahn. He found a section where he could, you know, open it up. And I think like got to like 185 <laughs> in like way too little time. Yeah. And then we he found some back roads and like we were testing the braking and the cornering. And he was kind of pushing the um traction to control to show me the work he had done or whatever. It's like they're very proud of that. They're very they're them. super proud yeah. of their traction control. And like um, uh, and I was just like. I remember thinking at the time, it's probably one of the more rational thoughts I've had. I was like, why would you ever need more than this? Like, this guy's not even driving that hard. Yeah. And it's still, like, as a passenger, like, one of the most exhilarating experiences. Yeah. No, as a gearhead, part of me is like, well, of course you just get the fastest one you can afford. Right. <laughs> well, of that's course. the other part of my brain. <laughs> and, 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 and I think for a very long time that was totally true. And, and in some cases, I think that it is still true. But I think that the, the middle stuff is now crazy crazy fast and because and it's almost like engineered to just be a little bit slower rather than like limited by design r- correct correct like they're like 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 porsche is just like well we have to have this one joke uh, right in this section here so that yes. the turbo's here you yeah. know and like Every company everything's that. just like perfectly yeah, outlined so that nothing and- steps it's the reason why i think like the cayman was slow and now can actually be fast because the 911 is so fast is 100 percent right that like the cayman's allowed to be still kind of fast we know? call we call this the cayman complex yeah and yeah. we apply it to other brands as well whereas the cayman is probably the better chassis it is probably. it is a hundred it is a hundred if, they, if the you put a cayman and a 911 of the same year next to each other and you put the same engine and the same gearbox in both cars the came and wins that's my belief yeah but and so they sandbag it with funky gearing or they limit the power or they do whatever specifically to make to keep the status oh, quo oh we got the wrong gearing it's so tall oh no <laughs> maybe that's, next time we get yeah. it no no even next time we don't get it the go to shark works <laughs> and then and meanwhile if you go you know these seats are very comfortable goes, yes we know this is because these are the perfect seats because we test every opportunity and everything we make is perfect yeah <laughs> Like not, yeah. nothing's accidental, except the Cayman being slower than the 911. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how does that happen? That's, intentional. <laughs> That's a good slogan. Porsche, nothing accidental. Should we make a T-shirt about that? Yeah. Nothing is accidental. Nothing's accidental, except it's Porsche like, would sue. <laughs> except the lawsuit that's gonna come. <laughs> yeah, that would not be an accident. It's true. No, I mean uh, that. I mean, I I do love. Porsches. I have a Cayman, you know, like it's. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot you do have a Cayman, right? I have a Cayman GTS. I, I got the the Subaru, um, but oh, the four cylinder Cayman GTS. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, and, and fucking fast. Here's the thing: is like everyone was was shitting on the sound of that engine. I mean, it's not great. And obviously, when I've got a V10, that sounds the way it does. You know, nothing really sounds like great compared. Yeah, to, I mean, even but, if you had a six cylinder Cayman compared to that right. V10, it would and, be. And I and lacking. I test I test drove the GT4, and I was like, this is an amazing car, but my god, that gearing. 
like who signed off on this you know you know it's like the beauty of a manual the beauty the beauty who was like uh big that cost slower (laughs) yeah right but the beauty of a manual is running through the gap i'm like you can live in second gear in that car yeah second gear goes to 74 you can literally live in second you touch third but I was like, if you're on a back road or canyons, like, are you ever shifting in that car? If That's you watch my ca- uh, Boxer Spider video, my new one, right. uh, which I filmed the end of last year, Boxer Spider is the same as Cayman GT4 now, it just right. doesn't have a roof. I drove the entire one take. It's like 16 minute drive to the entire video in third gear. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> and, and I remember on the test drive, I was like, man, this is su- such a bummer. And an unintended side effect is because it's a naturally aspirated engine and because it's kind of lacking in torque on those lower revs, when you shift into second and you shift into thirds, it's a little slow. It's not oh, fast. Oh, yeah, if you're out of the power it's band. It's not fast. Yeah, yeah, you and you can, the you'll bring it all motor. the way up and it's yeah. just like, uh-huh. and then you get into the speed. Yeah. But it's like, I was like, this doesn't feel that fast now of course that's not necessarily why you're buying it but then the gts has the torque. for a fucking hundred grand it should feel fast yeah and, 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 <laughs> and the gts feels faster uh we ended up going for the pdk because the uh, girlfriend at the time and i were sharing the car um but uh like she's my ex-girlfriend now so <laughs> <laughs> just give her, the, give her the transmission, yeah, give, her the transmission. Give, her the, give her the gearbox well she she wanted a she wanted a boxer and i wanted a cayman and and, and i wanted a manual and I was like, we either do manual boxer or uh, PDK Ooh. Cayman, and we end up with PDK Cayman. That's all right. That's all but, right. But it's a great car. I that car. I really like that GTS, man. When I got that one as a press car, and I went out with my homie who had a 2016 GT4, and we swapped cars, he was fucking pissed. He was so mad. He was like, dude, this thing's really fast. He's like, Nick, <laughs> this Steinman. Oh but wow. I let, him, I let him to drive the GTS, and he was like, oh, dude. He's like, I think I need to get a turbo or something. I was like, do not put a turbo on that thing. He's <laughs> like, I got to do something, man. He's like, because I let him drive for like 20 minutes. He's like, I don't, I don't think I can go back after that. Did Is he the do first gearing time on his made... car? No. Okay. But he that, did, but he did help. fucking 25 Gs in uh, GT3 plenums and exhausts and all, I mean, all kind of crazy. Basically shit. everything that's not a turbo. But, yeah, he, but didn't, he didn't do well. The, on that the, car. the the GTS the GTS is the first time the 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 uh, latest gen I keep forgetting the the seven one eight seven one eight yeah GTS the, say the car name right, right. Misha. I know I, I, it's the it's the Booker's come on you poisoned ah. me ah. um but um no but that's the first time they made that car legitimately quick feel quick right yeah and um uh, you how know, much of that is the engine though. No, like, it is. It is okay. the engine. It's entirely mean, the because engine. Of the, from the torque. Yeah, from yeah, the torque. Yeah, yeah. It was just a torque thing. Even you know? when I drove seven one eight Boxster S, I came back from that going, "Oh Jesus, this thing is." Yeah, 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 fast, yeah. They made man. it. They made it fast. They finally made I think it. That thing runs twelve. They made it. Boxster S runs twelves. And it's and Goddamn it's cars that, are fast. that car. I think is maybe one of the most perfect cars ever made because it's actually the one car that made me be like a few times like. Do I need that Lambo? You know, because it's so good and so yeah. capable, and, and I'd really say usable. Ninety percent of the too. time, yeah. Such oh my an god, easy car to live with. It, it's it, it's the car I I drive the most yeah, because I'm not because it's so daily friendly. It's so comfortable. It's such a nice place to be. It's fast. It can handle back roads and canyons. Like what the Lambo can do, only is access when you really know how to drive that thing and when you're really pushing. Oh. But for 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 ninety percent of people. You're going to get about the same performance out of that car. If you really want more, just put uh, Sport Cup 2s on there. I want to know, is anyone making a tune yet for the 718? Does anyone really bother? Or do they all just kind of go... <laughs> I've seen I've seen tunes, maybe on Sharkworks or whatever. It's like minimal. minimal really? Minimal stuff. Because like when a, we a, went on the launch of that, the 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 so one of the Porsche guys like off the fucking record was like, listen, this thing with like intercoolers and a tune is like a 500 horsepower engine. Wow. Oh wow, that's not that's the Cobb website is uh is showing pretty incremental gains, huh? Right. Well, the stuff I've seen. So I'm sure there's I'm sure oh, there's that's the base. Wait, that's the base. Go to the S. Go down to the S. Cuz the Boxster's the fucking 2 liter. It doesn't even have variable oh, geometry yeah. turbo. Scroll down. That's what we need there. We need the Cayman S. So what's the what's the gain there? Uh I want to look for the actual number. Okay. Um Let's see. Stock test car mm-hmm. put down 345 horsepower and 328 torque to the wheels. To the wheels in stock form. <laughs> to the wheels in stock form, everybody. Bro, STI owners would be fucking jerking off in those in their own mouths to get that number. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's an old engine? 
<laughs> no, I mean I know I know that engine so came out. So this is just Porsche just underrating the crap. Yeah. So it doesn't wow. look like yeah, you should buy quoting, the 911. They're quoting the fucking so, cra- the wheel horsepower right. as the crank horsepower. With with a small increase in this is all off cop site. So quote with a small increase in boost pressure, we saw results of 378 horsepower to the wheels, 353 torque. So wow. power gain is only 30. Torque is th- is also uh, 25. Um, this now if you got a like a pro tune or something, yeah. you probably get more out of it. And that's this, the OTS stage one map, bro. Yeah, and if this is without exhaust, obviously that's a big hindrance on turbo cars. A plus twenty five, plus thirty with just a tune on a four cylinder is excellent. Here's the GTS. What about the GTS? This is for Misha's car because we can hook this up. We oh. can make a we can make a phone call. Oh yeah, and you can have this. Okay, well maybe um, I will. <laughs> there's no number for the GTS, but it looks like it went from about. I'd say 340 to 390 horsepower. Hell yeah. And the torque. How much is Man, this? the torque curve is so strange For on these access cars. Access port, stage one. I mean, retail, it's probably a few hundred bucks. Five, five six hundred dollars. You guys are the worst friends ever and the best <laughs> friends ever. <laughs> you know? I, I'm a thousand percent going to get like, this. We like yeah, to, that's the cheapest power ever. We can um, probably make a phone call and make you not have to pay for so, that. So here's the thing. Well, really? Yeah. Well, don't say that. <laughs> it's, tu- it's tuned. It's for marketing, dude. So no so, so here's here's the thing about that car. I, I mean, I, I'll take more power, but there's a, like 500 horsepower I'm not interested in because the thing I like about that car is the balance. Everything is, it's Thanos. Everything in perfect balance, right? I, and it's... A, an off-the-shelf map won't ruin that. No, 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 no. That's nice. fine. That's yeah. totally, that's totally fine. But I'm just saying, like going to those stage three kind of things. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like I, that. That's where I'm just like, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of like the intent being there. You know. Could, yeah, could, and I don't really necessarily things. think that it's that there's it, there becomes a point where you're tuning out of class, as yep. I say, yep. and you yep. okay, you bought this car for you know a lot of money, but now you're putting all this other shit into it, and that, you know and that costs even more money, and you affect your depreciation, your warranty, all that kind of craziness, and you know with a Porsche, you don't need to fuck with it too much. It's it as I said, that car is so perfect and so great that like it makes me question whether it's really dumb to have that Lambo you know and then it's I drive not. the Lambo Lambo rules too the Lambo, the Lambo does rules too but I mean, it's just you get these cars sometimes that just do everything so well you're like wow this it would is be incredible. dumb if the Lambo sat in the, in the garage and you never used it no I drive it but, a lot but I know for a fact you drive that car yeah. a lot and so like we've talked about other times the miles are cheap yep so if you if you're unafraid of the miles and 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 you drive it, then it's then it's a great thing. I have to, to have. thank you for that, by the way, because I was definitely for doing point, mileage math on you. No, not even mileage math, but just sort of just getting my head straight about it. because you know I did buy the car, drive it. I I would say I was being very sort of cautious. Look, like, and I, I don't know how many of your viewers are in this situation, but like I'd say like maybe five six years ago, I was in a position where like. I thought for the rest of my ni- my life, I will never have like a fast car. You know, that's just not in the cards for me. You know, and because then, you thought that because, financially, because, yeah, financially, you didn't want you know, financially, it? Okay. just oh, okay. just Im- impossible. You okay. know, like I loved cars. I almost didn't love them as much because it's like, why torture myself? You know, I, I, looking at things I will never afford. You know, um, and then you know. Uh, I I put a lot of work into businesses and it's not the band it's everything else but you know the honestly the main goal was to try to like get these kinds of cars that was like the next yeah. goal to get these kinds of cars but the thing that a lot of people don't experience and you don't necessarily have to experience as much as others is like when you've had no car or crappy cars and then you get like a nice car the anxiety that comes with it is so real and needs to be addressed you know huh. because because you spent all this money that in in my case it's like was this a responsible purchase hell no you know can i afford it just about you yeah. know like but there's probably a million other ways to spend that money that would have been more responsible so now i've got this thing and it's perfect or it's near perfect cuz that's how i bought it and i'm afraid of parking it anywhere i'm afraid yeah. of leaving it anywhere i'm afraid of taking it for drives and scraping it somewhere i'm afraid of all these things that i never thought about and no one really ever talks about this, but like I transitioned from like, I will never own one of these to like, hey, like I can start looking at these cars and I really wish there had been a bit of a primer on that. You know? <laughs> we need like, a, like an, a, an AA for people who can suddenly afford to yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Supercars for dummies, you know? Yeah, well, like, I mean, <laughs> I think that's interesting and I think people handle it different ways. Either they handle it like you're talking about and they, and it's this precious thing and oh my God, or they they make that money so fast and it's, they're like just totally irresponsible with it and it goes they go way the other way. Sure. And they I, just I, don't understand the value of the dollar. 
they probably didn't work as hard to get the money as you did <laughs> to get your money in that case. But like that, not like people, you know, it goes in one way or the other. I think you're doing a good job of driving the car. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it, it's also this rolling thing because like the first fast car, I bought myself a, an, an E90 M3 sedan. I think I paid like 44 grand for it. Okay. So you had in between nice cars. Yeah. That was like my first. Like, yeah. That was like my first. Uh, that's actually the first car I bought for myself because otherwise I was just walking to work or like boring my parents to like uh -huh. SUV. Right. Um, so E90 uh, M3 sedan is a nice car. So it was a good, it was a good, good car. car. Yeah, it was a great car. Absolutely loved that car, uh, and I thought that was going to be it because I, I barely scraped the money to, to get that together. My parents thought I was insane, but you know, did they, it go badly for some reason? Nope. Why did nope. so why did you nope, think nope. that was going to be it? No, because you know. Uh, Cause I'm Jewish and there's guilt and there's like you know like there's all this and my parents are just looking at me like oh he's dumb you know <laughs> like oh. I, why, why didn't why why didn't you buy a house you know like yeah. because, like here are all the other ways you could have spent this money instead of being a failure but uh, pepperoni pizza in a German car please. yeah yeah I've just completely disappointed them like right. yeah. but uh, yeah so so I mean that that um, that was my first. Uh, taste of my irresponsibility and at that point in time I was so careful but that was my only car you know so I was parking taking it everywhere yeah. but now I have you know a daily I have a, a BMW X3 which I paid more for and that is a beater like I don't <laughs> care where that it's goes it's all economies of scale yeah, dude. exactly, it's, it's, exactly. A, it's where you put it mentally I had, I had a Mustang in high school and it, it wasn't worth that much money but I, I but I literally convinced my father to park his Mercedes outside in the street not, so I could park my Mustang in the garage, <laughs> and he, I should probably give him more credit today than I give wow. him for going for this, and for two years, my Mustang was in the garage, and his fucking car was outside. What a dude. <laughs> what a dude, yeah. indeed. Your dad My rules. dad was a G. Yeah, he was a I, G. I, I, would, have I would not do that for my no. kid. Hell I would, no. <laughs> I would not do that for my kid. <laughs> wow. I buy him nice shit for his birthday now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but uh, uh, yeah, no, it's just, it's where you, it's where you uh, package it mentally yeah so that's i think another reason why i like that came in so much because it costs less i don't have guilt about leaving it on the street or leaving it whatever i well, could take yeah. it wherever but what you did change my mind about was like look it's just a car it's insured i've, I've even like gone above and beyond and got like the wheel and tire package for it and everything because you know how expensive the wheels I are know. on that damn car so it's like you gotta you gotta read the five print on them right them wheel and tire insurance because well, sometimes if the tie if the wheel still holds air it's like if you bend a wheel but it's still holding air, they but it's like, fuck, it. they won't cover it. And then what you got to do is you got to go home and take a fucking sledge and make it not hold air anymore. <laughs> exactly. And it's just a little more work. <laughs> <laughs> a little more work than it needs to be. Ask but still. me how I know that. <laughs> <laughs> still cheaper than buying a new wheel. For sure. <laughs> For sure. But, but, you know, like that... I think the thing that you did tell me, I think you told me that you had a friend who, when he gets a new car, he'll actually like like mark it with a key. Oh, Musto like, Mike Musto, yeah. he keys yeah. it. Yeah, he keys his own car when he first gets I one. I didn't go that far, but I, the message was received. Yeah, yeah, And no. since then, you know, I've been driving it around. I think the other thing is also just uh, I, I get anxious with this stuff, so actually doing it, leaving it somewhere, uh, wherever, overnight or uh, for whatever, and then the car's fine, it's like, oh, that yeah. was fine. Yeah, yeah, And then you just keep driving. So the more I drive it, the more I drive it. Good. Yeah, And yeah. actually, I've been driving that more than any other car lately for, like, completely pointless things, but I think it's actually a great car to drive. It drives like a Honda. Yeah, uh, like that's a, a good really thing good about a modern car. Lambo or any modern supercar Super is you can just use it as a car if you want to. I mean, they're low, but but besides that's that... That's it. And you got the front lift. It yeah. actually clears stuff better than the Cayman, which doesn't have a front lift. Lambo is... Wait, is Lambo the one where you can't do the lift while the wheels are turned? Is that no? That's, that's McLaren. That's McLaren, McLaren won't let you. It's the stupidest really? thing. Really? Yeah. Uh, Porsche has the best nose lift. It pops up in like a quarter second. Yeah. Lamborghini is the second best nose lift. Yeah, I mean it's it's not fast, but like I've definitely done it at like thirty miles an hour. Right. The corner, like oh, got it. Yeah, know? fast isn't important. What matters is you can you can do it. And while the wheel is turned and it doesn't interrupt other processes. I've literally like, never thought about yeah, that. Yeah, like in that McLaren, sucks. one of the things that I hate about McLarens, and they, they haven't ever changed this, is you can't operate the nose lift if you're not wearing your seatbelt. And I don't drive with my seatbelt off, but like sometimes I pull the car in and out of the garage, and you or in and out of the driveway, or, or if you're approaching the whatever, approaching my thing. So I pull up my seatbelt to get my keys, and now I can't. And it it covers the 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 menu on the screen with driver unbelted, oh. and it won't let you. It's the dumbest thing ever. Well, it, it and, and these are these are supercar problems, which no, uh, yeah, no one can relate problems. to. But but but, but I will but I will I will say this like um 
I was told you're not supposed to leave your car on the on the lift, and sometimes I forget. There's so two. Uh, Did they broadcast live during that too? Yeah. Oh fuck. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, I, I like to go talk to them and learn more about this. All right. Let's see if let's see if it just. So the thing the YouTube I've noticed back. It, it keeps it live in case you have a cutout. It does. So. Um, Get the antenna up on the roof. Someone says it's. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says, here we go. Here we go. Hello. And we're back. This has been Wirecast, you know. We're just doing a, a little test. Just their skunk the, works. The They're thinking failure. of rolling out products. Hello, They're going to start charging fail. for them. Hello, Wirecast fails. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome. Oh, wow. Good? Yeah. We exist? Yep. All right. Ask them what we were talking about, because I don't remember. <laughs> uh, Great you driving your Lamborghini a lot, and I'm proud of you for it. Thank you. And if I inspired you, if I inspired you a little bit to drive your car more, then that's good. Mm. Those the modern cars. It's one thing if you have a rare collectible, f somehow fragile or historically significant car. I understand being paranoid about that. The modern cars, they've the companies have done such a good job of making them usable yeah. that it seems almost a travesty, a, a tragedy to to not you know. Use I, them. I agree. I agree because so many of the the cars, you know, I'll test drive these cars when I'm shopping for them, and I'm always blown away by how livable they are. Totally. And when you consider that the Performante is like the quote unquote track spec, right? <laughs> and it's still yeah, like that's the hardcore one. It's basically as comfortable as a regular Huracan. I'm like, yeah. man, we've hit a new level of yeah, like comfort. And I got I CarPlay. Looked, in that car, I've taken yeah. meetings in that car. You know, like, like I'm like sending like you know voice uh, voice uh, to text messages and like doing all my stuff. I'm like, I'm in a Lambo right now. You like, know that's what? Crazy. I, and we're so and I, we're so conditioned to that at this point that we had Kevin Zinger on the phone uh, last night, and I was asking about his psycho death machine, and I was right. like, so <laughs> you know, how is it in traffic? And he's like. Yeah, you know, it's not really meant for that. And I'm kind of like, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it's one of those. And he's like, it's like 1,300 horsepower. It's really meant to just scare the shit out of me every day. <laughs> right. And I'm like, but can I get groceries in it? Right? <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> but I actually do get groceries with my, yeah, my Lambo. Because I'm do. driving and I'm like, oh, there's no line at the quarantine mart right now. Let's go but get some seltzer yeah. water. Because of the all-wheel drive, you lose some trunk space there. Yeah. I mean, If you it's, get the, the, the rear-wheel drive Lambos? The, they, the they, front is twice as big. Really? Yeah, because I mean, no, that makes sense. No front diff. That makes sense. When yeah. I had the 488, I was like, that's yeah, actually pretty Mc, big. Yeah, the McLarens and the 488, the you open the front and you go, holy shit, the, you can the fit. The McLaren has no front uh, uh, anything. Yeah, no. I no mean, front anything. No, it's just like uh, fluid. It's not even a sway bar on that car, right? Or uh, um, 720? The 720, it has, yeah. It has like uh, a sway bar-like device. I don't... Yeah, it's got that magic suspension. It's got the magic, thing. Suspension, the magic suspension and the huge trunk. Yeah, yeah, but cars with without the front wheel drive that, systems. That that's what we were talking about. We were talking about McLaren because oh, I yeah, want right. I want, want to love I want I want to want a McLaren. Oh, but and everyone I think you included and uh, Johnny Lieberman says mm -hmm. the same. He's like the 720s is the best supercar on the planet. Uh, I will stand by that. Yeah. So so the, and a lot of people say that. So then in my mind, I'm like, I need to get into a 720S. You should. But then, you know, like I talk to owners <laughs> who drive I, yeah. them. And then like I know someone who doesn't like to drive them in the canyons because they're like, I don't want to get stranded. Like I've never thought about going, getting stranded in the land. But at the end of the day, it's a German car with like one of the most reliable platforms ever made yeah. for a supercar. You know? I've heard things from not, I don't know any owners personally that I heard things from, but mm. I've heard... You know, you hear around that they have issues with cracking glass and weird stuff, and I, I, I don't, I just don't know. I, 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 I know someone I believe who said those people. He, he said he got locked in his car twice. That, like these are things yeah. that should you should never have that to deal with in any car. That happened to me in a Ferrari. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've never had that. I've never, I've never had that happen to me. No, and, I know, wouldn't. It wouldn't happen in your Audi. You're right. Exactly. Well, they, that's why. That's I, why it's an Audi. That's yeah. why it's great. That's why that you know I came from an R8. I was like, okay, so this is an R8 plus plus. Yeah. And like you know that that that's kind of the beauty of it is everything works. It's been a fairly reliable car, uh, minus one really weird thing that happened. But uh, I wouldn't <laughs> buy any first gear McLarens. Yeah. They tend to. They tend to. 
have some bugs and stuff that get worked out. Uh, but I, I know what you mean. There's yeah. a difference between me or Johnny or Harris getting one for a week, saying it's amazing, and then someone in, in the real world spends three hundred and fifty or four hundred thousand dollars on this thing and it doesn't work right. I can understand how they'd be pissed. And it's not like you get a loner. You know, it's like, okay, so now you don't have this car. Yeah, now it's, it's not here. Sorted out. <laughs> and that part's coming from, you know, the UK, so we don't know how long you're going to be without this car. And, again, it's not the end of the world. It's under warranty. It's whatever. But it is also, like, yeah. a bit of a boner killer. Well, it's like, how many headaches do you want to deal yeah. with? Right. Yeah, it is. And when I've had relatively headache-free cars so far, I'm a, maybe I'm a little spoiled. Maybe, maybe, you're maybe ready this to is get where Clarkson something would say, oh, you need to get the Alpha. Look, and like having yeah. an yeah. R8 down, or a 911 is like having a Rolex watch. Right. If, if you start there... You just assume all other cars work as well as that exactly, does. Exactly. And then you learn that an Omega Speedmaster, everyone brags about the fucking thing going to the moon, which is convenient if you want to go to the moon. Except if you want to wash your hands, it doesn't repel water. You know, it's funny. I know you don't like it. So I'm wearing the Daytona, yes, but I have are. a dark side of the moon, which I love. I've seen you wear but that, But that's too. the only watch of mine that's failed. <laughs> the uh, the self-winding thing. I, oh, I, really? I sent it in. They fixed it and whatever. It is what it is. That's a lovely watch, too. I do but, love it. But it's the same thing. It's... But, yeah. Yeah. But having having a, a really fast sports car that works properly all the time yeah. can spoil you for some of the other ones that that might be a little more. And so far, they've finicky. all been very they've all been very reliable. It was uh, it was uh, E ninety M three, and then when I finally like had a little bit more money to play with, I was like, I'm gonna do a 911 Turbo S, 991.1, oh. which oh, was just yeah. like, okay, this is ho now oh, a new you've world. Been there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's I like- you said this fucking Lambo is your first nice car. Now you drop a 911 no, no, Turbo no, no, S no, and no, an no, R8 on No, me. but it's of this price range. Oh. Which, well, yeah, and that's not even necessarily true uh, because I had a 488 before this too. <laughs> but like- that was a. That was Bro, a, You need to be a little more honest with yourself. <laughs> yeah. No, but I've had. I, I, so I've been on this. I've been on this car quest. A very expensive, stupid <laughs> car quest, where I'm trying so to figure out. You already had a 488 too. Yeah, I had a 488. Oh. I, and I. I. I have things to say. Am I going to get banned by Ferrari if I talk about things? You, you don't get free cars, so you can free, say whatever you want. They're going to like blacklist me from the from no, their, their. They brand. might blacklist me, but yeah. I don't give a shit. Go ahead. What do you? What's what happened? What's, what's Okay, so so I, I'd attribute my love of cars to uh, having a uh, Ferrari F40 model when I was five, that red Ferrari F40 model, and that just started everything. That sparked the way your stories have been, you're going to go, I had a Ferrari F40 when I was five, <laughs> and <laughs> it sounded so good. I know, I wish. That was a model, and that just started everything. Bury the so, lead there. <laughs> so, so logically, like it's like, okay, if ever I could ever afford it, the dream, the grail, right, is a red Ferrari, a mid-engine red Ferrari. Okay. That would be the thing. Growing up, that was the 348, then the 355, and so on and so forth. And then, when I was finally able to afford something, it was a 488 GTB. But it was all—it was always just whatever the newest one was. It was, it was not a frozen in time thing. N no, because I've always liked the technology. I like the, it's like you were saying—you want to buy the best, and the, it's like knowing that the 488 is quote unquote better than 458. I'm sure we could debate that all day, but I don't know this because yeah. I haven't driven everything. I'm like, yeah, the 488 is the one that you want, right? And everyone says they it's have, the best. They have, it's you know, the same thing as the, the, the 911 when it went naturally aspirated, the turbo, you know, it's the, it's the same kind of thing. What do you, how do you want it to feel? You but, know? but you know, this is, this is one of these interesting paradoxes that, that you have is like coming from not knowing or driving any of this stuff and never really being able to test this stuff out. You don't know what it's like to live with these cars. Yeah. You don't, it's very possible I might have liked the 458. I probably won't know because I probably won't go out and buy one or, you know, try to... And again... But you didn't like, like the 488. I didn't... It's not I didn't like... The, the car was fine. It was, it was good, but overpriced, and I hated the brand and the culture. Oh, all right. There's there's this... You know, when they're, where they're, when they're selling you the car, I bought a new one, which is really stupid. I don't know how I got tricked into that. But I have this blind spot for Ferrari because they were my favorite... Brand. It was this thing that I always wanted, right? And I guess for the longest time, they were this quote-unquote small batch thing, and then they went public, and now they crank out cars, but they still pretend like it's hard to buy a new one. Yes. They still pretend like, oh, you have to own a few used ones, and then yeah. you'll be on the list for an allocation, then you yeah, wait 18 like, months. They like to play that game. But in right? reality, is that not the case? No, like, like the dude was like, oh, we just happened to have this red... 48 GTB and he took me for a drive and I was like this thing's crazy this is amazing you know like this thing scares me more than the the 911 um and and I was like okay I think I can actually 
afford this without having to change too much about my lifestyle, right? So like that that means like, okay, maybe I should go for it. And it was like this bucket list thing. And it was one of those cases of like, don't meet your heroes because, you know, the car was cool, but it was an intimidating car. It was squarely. I don't think I was a good enough driver to, to, to handle it. And, you know, I was living in Washington, D.C. at the time. It's cold. And like your tires aren't warmed up, it's mm-hmm. rear wheel drive. Like even just drive around traffic, trying well, to maneuver hairy. around they're people. Hairy. They're they're it's it's light on its feet. I'm sure it's great at, at the limit. I took it to a track day, you know, like a, that was a Ferrari arranged track day. No one drives their cars. I was putting like you know a thousand miles on it in the first month, just driving it wherever. And then, you know, I started to look at like the values of these cars. I'm like, man, I'm starting to tank the value of my car. Like you don't see used ones with more than like two, 3,000 miles. Mm. And and I started talking to a dealer. I was like, you know, does this affect the value? And they were like, yeah, it kind of does. And some dealers were like, yeah, we won't buy a car if it's got 4,000 miles because it will never sell. Get the fuck out yeah, of here, man. really? Yeah, man. Like, I, I don't know how true this still is. Where because was this down in Texas? No, no, this was in Washington, D.C. Oh. When I, you know, that's where I was born and raised. So oh. this was before I moved. Um, and uh, oh, so the myth, the myth of the uh, un- unavailable new Ferrari is uh, is done, huh? Well, I don't know that it's done. I don't know how they enforce it, but they had a car ready to go. They <laughs> pretended they were like, oh, you know, we got this one because like we, you know, we sold so many cars that they just yeah, give, they yeah, occasionally yeah. give us these freebies. But yeah, I took a bath on that car after sign. After six months, I was like, man, I could just get in an R eight, which. I'll have less parking anxiety and driving anxiety about. It's a better quality car. Like this car was brand new, had like a driver's side mirror that shook so much that you couldn't see out of it, had like fit and finish issues, panel gap stuff, which I'm just like, man, the amount I spent on this, I was yeah. I was bummed. It's I was a just kind of I, I was kind of bummed and you know, then when I would talk to a dealer about it, their answer was, well, it's a Ferrari. And I'm like, that's coming from Porsche. Yeah, like you're yeah, saying, yeah. like you come from Rolex. You come from these things that work. And when you feel like their end goal was like, okay, we're just going to design the most perfect thing, and then the price is the price. Mm-hmm. Like coming from that to Ferrari, where it's like, well, we're selling you a Ferrari, so just fucking deal with it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And most people it's don't actually, drive their cars. That's exactly in line with Jay Leno's attitude towards them. As oh, well. really? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't like them at all. He won't own a Ferrari for it's, that reason. And and it's, I, I don't want to say never. I, I, I'll I'll never say never. But it definitely turned me off to the brand. And then I was that like, oh, sense. you can buy a McLaren. Any day you can, yeah, you can buy a Lamborghini, Lamborghini Aston Martin. You can they, buy a Lamborghini. You, money you can throw miles on it. And, yeah, you can throw miles on it. No guilt. No worry about yeah. it. You know, it's not like all of a sudden your car is unsellable because you put like eight thousand miles on it. You know, Ferraris have there's a couple stages of them. It's like the zero to three, right? And the dealers like that. And then it, it but when you bump them up a little bit, like my friend Rob Ferretti likes to buy driver mile Ferraris, and he pays less for them, and they're imperfect when he buys them, but he does very well. They don't cost him anything. Right. He buys like 360s and 430s and shit, right. and fucks around with them for like a year, and then sells them, and it costs him like three grand. Really? Yeah. So that's, that's the move. move. That's the move. That's, that's the, the move. move. Yeah. You and don't you don't want to be anywhere near a Ferrari dealer. Right. Right. <laughs> like, just, and actually, <laughs> th- you just reminded me. I don't want to be because then I went to sell the car, uh, and I was I was trading it in. You know, Maryland's one of those states where you get like the the trade in value. So whatever you get, like it works. Uh, you know, you get the, You only pay the the tax on the difference in price. Oh, oh, which is really? Very nice. Um, cool. And and they can honor that anywhere. So I was just like looking uh, at the place I was getting the, the R8 from in uh, in uh, Florida, and they gave me a better price on the car. And the Ferrari dealership was like, don't sell it to them. And I was like, well, then match the price. And they're like, no, but if you don't sell it back to us, you can never buy another car yeah, from us yeah. again. And I'm like, fuck you guys. Like, yeah. It wasn't even that much <laughs> it wasn't money. It was hard of, the first time, out bro. Of I just walked in here. I'll, and then, like my, and then I, I spoke to people. They're like, yeah, just go to another Ferrari dealership. You're not banned <laughs> yeah. from Ferrari. You're just yeah. banned from that dealership. I'm like, oh, okay, wow. You know, you know I've, I, that is a pretty common thing. Yeah. I've heard that a lot. And I, heard, I don't hear it as much with... Uh, I hear it with like the La Ferraris and stuff like that, and I hear it where the the dealer will go try to sabotage other. De- it's it's a fucking wow. grimy business. So this is this is the thing is like I got into this on a very pure level. Where it's just I just love these. I've always loved these. I finally have the means to do something about yeah. it, and now I'm finding out there's all this politics that's just destroying yeah. the fun. I'm like, this is not why I got into cars. It wasn't to play this stupid spec game that's going on, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's a. It, I get asked a lot about investments in cars, also investments in watches, and man, this shit's hard if you try. If you really think too much about the money, you kind of yeah. have to 
be at a place where you can't let that swirl in your head too much. Yeah. I got lucky with this piece because, well, I just got lucky, you know? Well, like, that's the, that thing rules. This this thing rules, and I traded a, a guitar for it. Did you? Know. Yeah. All right. So, so it, worked out, it worked out very <laughs> well. Something you've got lots of. And it's gained value. It's it, Exactly. And it's, it's, and it's gained value since, so it's like, no, you know, White that's Dial been Daytona an investment. is an excellent piece. But I got it because this was the Grail watch, you know? It, not because I was like, oh, this will be an investment. Like, if this loses all its money, I won't care. I'll still well, wear I, it. Well, I know? feel the same way about my watches because the watch market has taken a big fat poo and so i have just been like you know what at least i like wearing them yeah and that, you know it was well actually this. i got a question for I'll you on the, on the watch side you've got you've got a beautiful pepsi i want the Thanks. batman and yeah. i see the prices dropping so i'm gonna ask you something like which you probably hate being asked but are we at the bottom or do i wait i have absolutely no idea nope, i need an answer now. i don't know nobody, <laughs> nobody can ever time the market yeah. i don't on know any yeah. market. I, I think i think you should I don't know. I think you should try and one. I haven't looked. I haven't looked in a while because, frankly, I'm not shopping for anything. I've seen. I've seen. I've seen uh, Batman go around like twelve. Oh, buy, buy, buy. Yeah, that's a if buy. I can get like twelve, thirteen, that's a just buy. buy it. Just that's buy a buy. It. Yeah, okay. uh, uh, a Batman with a Jubilee. Jubilee. Yeah, that's a buy. A twelve. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's new. I mean, obviously, it's like the reseller, but it's new. It hasn't no, new, been used. New. Used new. Like yeah, hasn't, used new. Hasn't box. been uh, yeah, registered. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. At twelve. Yeah. Buy. Okay. Right, there, we go. <laughs> there we go. At, Be- best friend, at, worst at 12, friend. <laughs> at 12, buy. At 20, sell. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> buy this watch and this access port uh, controller for your thing. You just walked out of here, you spent 14 years. There we go. There we go. No, 12 is a buy. This yes. isn't a podcast. Yes, yes. This is just uh, how, how much money do we get out of Misha's wallet? Bro, here? let's roll you know, it out. Right? <laughs> well, actually, no, then there's a, there's another question because going on this uh, horsepower thing. Uh-oh. So this is, the, this is the big debate. With You know, it was like going to a 720 or stick with the the Lambo and do the VF thing, the supercharger, which is pricey. Oh, well, that's it is pricey, but it's really good value for money. Yeah, you think? Yes, a hundred percent, dude. Two hundred horsepower for like thirty grand—that's right. a crazy deal. Yeah, in, yeah, in Lamborghini world, in Lamborghini, that's a crazy world. deal. It's an even crazier deal when you—I've driven those cars. Yeah, they're fucking bad shit. Yeah, I mean, you're you're running a quarter mile deep in the nines with something like that. Um, it doesn't change the feel. It feels just like it feels now. It's just that was the one thing. That was the one thing because I do love the response on the car. It doesn't change that. That's it doesn't change that. And when you're off throttle, or when you're at mild throttle, it you don't you don't feel it at all. Really, that's ideal. Yeah, yeah, no, it's invisible. The daily dude in Strata, the daily drivability of the car, it's like slow in the best way. You know, the blower's invisible until you until the last twenty percent of the pedal, and then the car just goes way fucking faster. Will I kill myself in the canyons? Ooh. No, no. <laughs> no I, haven't been like, I haven't been like you know what I need is more horsepower. <laughs> you know? I don't I don't think you do. Like I need I was like I need more cornering grip. You know? No, you could you should <laughs> drive this car for another year. Yeah, at least. But then like that kit is a really good kit. You don't have to modify anything else in the car. It's reversible. You know, um, it's really non-invasive. Generally, it's a low boost setup. It's only I think it's five and a half six pounds, and so you're 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 really not stressing the engine out at all and it brings that that huracan has a lot of chassis a yeah. lot and so you know obviously your your cornering limits don't get any higher with 200 extra horsepower but yeah. it's got plenty of brake it's got plenty of tire it's very stable um the weight penalty of the kit is very small i mean i think maybe it's 25 or 30 pounds oh, right okay, on yeah. top of the engine um so it, it's it's a really nice piece of hardware so that kit. over 720 you'd say i don't know i mean because you've are it's not like you're starting from zero you're starting no. from the position of you already own the car yeah you know yeah. and so That's true. That's so true. it's do you like this car and you just want to crank crank up the notch to st- have yours stand out a little bit from the others, if, you know, if that's a thing, or really turn the fizz up, or do you want something that feels different? The McLaren is, it's all about those turbos, that yeah. turbo power band, that whole like eyeballs getting sucked in the back of your head thing, that's what the McLaren's about. The Lambo doesn't do that. No. The Lambo's more race car-y. McLaren's yeah, the, not like that. The, I, I've, I've test driven the, the, the 720 a couple times, and I did I, I did the Spider recently, and mm-hmm. I was I was really blown away with that car. Yeah. Honestly, the thing that blew, blew me away, which is probably not stuff that most people would care about, but that thing rides really nice. That's it. It's like, the best riding sports I was like, car, I was period. like, are these roads like really smooth? They're like, nope. Magic <laughs> suspension. Magic if suspension. If you want to get real close to that, and I mean real close, C8 Corvette. Z- really? Z51 Mag Ride. Wow. They nailed it. They wow. absolutely nailed it. 
Three best riding cars I've ever been in. Rolls Phantom, McLaren 720, C8 Corvette, Z51 wow. Mag Ride. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the C8. C8 is one of those cars that like isn't there yet for me. But it will correct. be. Correct. But, but it will be. Correct take. Yeah. The, when they put the flat plane psycho motor yes. in it, that's going to be the one to have. <laughs> and maybe when they figure out how to line up the trunk a little better. <laughs> Wait, what, what's up with Do the trunk? My, I, I, I'm not going to ask because I know the answer. I drove a uh, customer vet, uh, a production car. And the good news was that the gearbox tune was fantastic. The final gearbox tune on that car is really, really good. And everything else about it was as good or better as I remembered. Okay, The yeah. bad thing was it wasn't screwed together nearly as well as the press car I drove and the tr the hat like a bunch of shit didn't line up right Ruh -roh. yeah it was it was like the, <laughs> the, the panel gaps were just dog shit um you know it's a vet and they'll, they'll they'll get there eventually. They'll get it because I thought the C7 by the end was like the C7 yeah, Grand thing. Sport was yeah, like yeah, yeah, a yeah. great car. They you figured know? it out by the end, and, and even and, that was a good riding car. Like I almost bought that at one. Yeah, point. Yeah, they are. I mean, they for for front engine cars they were pretty good, and even that Psycho ZR1 with the big wing on the street rode pretty good. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It, I remember it did. seeing that video of you taking it around a track, and it's Fucking like. Scary. Do you want to take car. a hand off the wheel with that much horsepower? Like, not you really. did see that video. You yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, did. I, I got, I got, to, I was too chicken shit to do the. Vi I couldn't drive stick in that car while narrating at a pace that was appropriate because it required too much thought. It's like a point where you do need fast. the automatic, and then they fix the worst and part then about the automatic. The C7. Was horrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that, 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 that automatic. I mean, that automatic. Like I remember hearing about it and I test drove some automatics at one point. I was like, wow, like this is really it's maybe junk. one of yeah, the worst really automatic like I don't understand how they put that in a performance car. Yeah. Like it was a huge oversight because the rest of the car is actually really fantastic. Because there's a there was a really big gap in between the people who drove manual vets and the people who drove automatic vets. <laughs> and each of those audiences had exactly what they wanted. Uh <laughs> Let's go exactly. to the fucking audience. We've got oh, a yeah. lot of questions. I'm coming out of a three-speed power glide. <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you have in the C7? What do you have in slushy? And what then that, that, that guy buys a ZR1, which is hilarious. You know, I think those I think those end run C7 ZR1s are going to be long long hold collectors items. Really? They did not they didn't sell very many of them because mm -hmm. I I think a lot of the reviews scared people out of them. Frankly, Dude, your your review scared the crap out. I was like, I I'm not I'm never going to try like, well, this. Well, I'm not buying one of these now. <laughs> it, that car, I mean, from the wing to the actual pentagram wheels yeah. to, to, the, to the 750 horsepower and the engine covered half the windshield right the engine came up and it covered half the <laughs> it was so ridiculous. Like, you won't be able to hold on to this car you won't be able to see a thing and Can't you'll be going see. way too fast to Can't do anything see. about it so you know good luck <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bright orange, so people get out of your Why way. Why did we not sell these? <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't sell. A, it's going to be a long hold. They didn't. They didn't make very of them. But we're we're going to realize in twenty years that there was actually like six of those fucking things sold, and they're worth a ton of money. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, we got a music question. Uh, what are your top metal bands that we've never heard of? Oh man. I'm I'm like the worst person. The fuck to ask. is he supposed to know what you've heard of? Well, but That's no, no. But, but <laughs> Great point. Here's the thing: is I don't listen to metal. Like I just make it. <laughs> like I don't know. You're around cars. That's hilarious. You I don't watch you're... anybody's car videos. Right. Either. You don't watch like you don't watch like other YouTube car channels. It's, like, it's all I watch. But like you know, I'm a fan. Uh, uh, I got I just... such a beef with somebody the other day because I he, they were like, "What are your favorite car books?" And I was like. I gotta be honest. I, I don't really read books about cars very often. I kind of read, and they and then he started sending me these lists of books, and I was <laughs> like, "Stop! I don't need car book recommendations." That's you do not cars. Why I don't do that. You do cars all day long. When you don't have to do cars, you're gonna do anything but. So yes. I love I love metal. I love playing it. Like you know, I I obviously grew up with it, but I. Don't really. I don't even know what like the new metal band. What are you <laughs> listening to right now? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll spin the question. What are you listening? Dude, to? this is actually gonna be super disappointing because I've been writing. I don't listen to music. I uh, in general, I don't listen to very much music. But then, do you I'm, not listen to music so that you don't like bite someone's style, or is it you don't no, have time? No, I, I listening to music is like an active process. Uh, so it it like 
I can't relax and mm. I start analyzing it. I'm, and I produce. I'm like uh, breaking it apart uh-huh. and thing. I can't even enjoy it. I have to like trick myself into enjoying music sometimes, you know. Um, so most of the time, I want silence. I always have. What like, if you're going to a con- do you see other bands live ever? Oh, it's so rare. It's <laughs> like concerts smell like work for me. So it's like I have to love. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I love the Meshuggah. Smell, the smell. Meshuggah is one of my favorite bands in the whole world. If Meshuggah's in town, I will. I will brave it. And unfortunately, you know, we share a lot of fans, so it's also like the 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 show. I'll get punished the most that you know but i will put up with it because that is how much i love that band that's when i will smoke up and just try to like just take it why'd all you in. point at me when you said that i didn't point at you i, po- <laughs> I pointed at the the, the 3d printing printed material 3D in printed. that in that pipe there <laughs> um, 3D printing. the na- nature's 3d that's printing <laughs> but, uh, but yeah like there are there are exceptions but it is kind of work to listen to music what am i listening to hammock Hem- honestly it, you guys should be listening to hammock it's just ear candy it's hammock, uh, like a hammock, hammock you like lay just in? hammock you lay in. It makes you feel like you're taking a warm bath. Really? Um, that. um, that's, so the album. that's how I feel about glass animals. They're very you're just like, hey, you're just sitting in a field. I don't know that, but okay. I probably should check it I out. Listen to that. They're on all um, So a Mysterium lot. is a great album. Uh Universalis is a really good album. Start with Mysterium. Okay. Um John, that, that's John Hopkins. I absolutely love John Hopkins. He's an electronic artist. Uh, not to be confused with Johns Hopkins, which I'm saying, sure gets I love every their day. cancer ward. Right? Yeah. Great cancer <laughs> really ward, great big, music. Big so fan. They go hand in hand. But um, dude, dude's incredible. Uh, it's all like kind of chill stuff because it's like, dude, when you're when you're on the road and you're making metal and you're listening to metal all day, like you chill. <laughs> like, yeah. Tubular bells. Like your yeah. own inner energy has to go like up and down. Like yeah, your adrenaline you can't is gonna be crash at that yeah. point. Even just coming on, uh, like coming off stage after a show, you're like, you have to come down from totally. That, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, what is a uh, Matt D asked what's a unicorn car that everyone couldn't care less about he has a manual 98 Plymouth neon prowler coupe, but he's prowlers. never seen another one prowlers yeah, prowlers, prowlers, prowlers are underappreciated I mean they're pretty rare we can call them unicorns how about a uh, Chrysler TC by Maserati yeah I don't know Most, how often I see that yeah, very... I see them disproportionately high I think Venice has a lot of them actually you well LA is? LA is a town I, of I think I only know of it because, because of like of me. you yeah, yeah like but I never I had no idea that that but this is the city of broken dreams and ideas that it's one you know someone thought were good it's the perfect car for someone that really had a great pitch in 1991 right <laughs> <laughs> they felt they did I've they, got it this is how we save the company yeah, yeah. yeah. you ever see the movie Bowfinger with yeah. Steve Martin yeah. it's the Bowfinger mobile <laughs> perfect Bowfinger mobile <laughs> Which is, a f- if you've never seen the movie Bowfinger, it's fucking amazing. It's a phenomenal I haven't movie. seen it in a long time, but I remember loving it. Dude, I will rewatch it. It holds up. great, because you've been spending a little more time in Los Angeles. You need to watch it as 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 someone who knows L.A. a little better now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're if living, I once I moved to L.A. and I watched it again like five years ago, I was like, oh my God, this is the funniest movie ever. Just being being in music and whatever, I do spend uh, quite a bit of time here, and like I started to get all these references. Because yeah, like yeah. when they reference L.A. in movies, they never... Let you know. They just kind of throw it yeah. and expect you to get it. There's a <laughs> you have to. And watch. now I'm like, oh, I get that. Yeah, there's <laughs> mad inside shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. L.A. Story, I think, uh, with Steve Martin mm-hmm. is it's nothing but that. Like, oh, it's, really? it's great. The whole opening scene is just about commuting. He's like crashing through alleys and stuff, and you're like, yeah, people literally do that to get around <laughs> a block of traffic. They'll go right, then down an alley, then make a left, and like you'll see the car pop out, and you're like. You just, you went around the line. <laughs> but the only thing over there is a fucking alley behind someone's house. They took it. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> All day, air day. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Tavarish, big shout out. He says his favorite podcast with his favorite guitarist. Freddie. Oh, making Freddy. it rain. Freddie in Thank the house. Freddy. He's a big fan. Uh, he's, he's a, he's a he really fucking r- kind of looks like you. No, Someone else said all that. brown people look the same. Is that what you're saying? No, wow. but like one old, fan. Wow. We got it live, everyone. We got you what are we needed. literally a- the same color as him. You have yeah. the same facial hair. Like you, li- you guys really do we, look we, a lot we've, alike. We've, we've gotten it. I, I, you know, I, I talked about actually going out there. One thing I'm not very good with cars is like wrenching or anything like that. I don't really know. I want to learn it. So I was like, dude, I would love to come out and just help assist. Oh, you should. However, and his then, shop is and then his this, shop's crazy. And then this happened, yeah, I know. you know? I know. So that that is a, a tentative plan. That is you, good, you know like what you can go learn to wrench on is my million mile Lexus that's down there with him. Oh, I, gave it, okay. I gave it to him. So you can go practice wrenching on that there shit. There we go. There we go. Although he's probably, he'll probably, oh, Misha, you want to learn to wrench? Here's a burned out carcass of <laughs> right? a Ferrari 355. <laughs> right? <Yeah. True. laughs> Which we're going to put like great. a 2JZ in just because we got to make everyone angry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love that dude. I love his channel. Um, and he's a, he's a metal fan. So like we kind of connected and he's a super nice guy. Yeah. Um, uh, what are your favorite metal bands? Do you like top three? Uh, so Meshuggah would be uh, 
uh, probably uh, first place. Uh, there's a band called Sixth. I don't know if How anyone spelled S I K T H. They're this oh. British band, super influential on me. Like, um, if you like metal, you might like it. Their singers are polarizing, but I don't know. It's a very influential band for me. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You guys know Dream Theater? Oh yeah, of yeah, course. Dream Theater, Dream Theater is massive, massive influence. Uh, so the whole story is, I started with um, with drums. I, I wanted to be a drummer. Then when I went to university, like couldn't really do drums. So I was like, okay, I'll focus more on the guitar now. And I basically wanted to be John Petrucci from Dream Theater. Yeah, like that. And I spent time practicing and learning because I was like if I do that surely I will become John Petrucci from Dream Theater that didn't happen but you know that well, it was turns a, out a good he's learning. him it, turned, um, it really <laughs> did turn out that he was him all along which is unfortunate yeah but, but um, you got as close as one could get without not being. even not even I gave up like you know a third of the way through but I was but I learned a lot it actually was a great way to sort of like learn and, and shed and get some some skills down because I had met, no have you met him yeah 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 we've toured with Dream Theater and oh cool they're super nice guys he's a super nice guy well I mean um, other than being him like totally Touring with them has got to be. That's got to be pretty that was, close. That was, that was a landmark. That's that, that, pretty that was, close. That was really. That was a really special yeah. tour. And like, yeah, it was like one of those like, wow, like pinch me kind of. Yeah, moment. that's so cool, dude. Because um, yeah, it was a massive. I, I saw them. I saw them when I was in uh, in university. I saw them, and uh, it was one of the first times I got like really starstruck. I was like at the back of the room, and I, he was on stage. I was like, oh my god, that's really him. Like, oh my god, you know. I remember how I felt seeing that, and then like, yeah, getting the tour, we got to jam and all that. I was like, That's dude, this awesome. is unreal, you know. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, those would probably be my uh, my top three if I had to just name them off the top of my head. Um. Does he still play? What does he play? Ernie Balls? Doesn't yep. He he's, got, Ernie he's got Ball? signature, 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 signature Ernie Ball, right? He's got a, like a real funky looking little guitar. He's got yeah. He's got two. He's got like the Majesty, which is kind of wild. Um, he actually like because I have a I have a signature model. You have with, your own guitar yeah, as well. Yeah, I have like a whole line, but it was kind of inspired by him and maybe Steve Vai a little bit. Like I'd say both those guys are very sort of business minded in their approach, mm-hmm. like very calculated in what they did. So. I'm expanding my line of uh, of guitars. It's interesting. Like who who's your, who manufactures them? Uh, Jackson. Oh, cool. Yeah. So actually, like the USA's are made oh, uh, in Corona. Really? Yeah, yeah. The, the Fender Factory. Yo, can, Fender I, owns- can I borrow one for a little bit, dude? You can have one. I have too many guitars. Really? You'd be, doing me a, you'd be doing me a favor. Oh, I love one. Yeah, could, I, yeah. I, I only have acoustics right now, but I've been really thinking about getting. I'll give. I'll give you. I should have brought oh, it. Oh, I'd love to have a periphery guitar. That'd be sick. Yeah. It, Thanks, well, here's man. the best part: is it doesn't say periphery or my name anywhere on it. Oh, that's the best. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to be like a. It's like Harley it. Davidson. Really yeah. makes some nice shit. Oh, yeah. do they make? So anything? those are those, those are the cool USA's. Though. We also have like the Pro Series, which are those like look uh, nice, the, man. the imports. That's a that's a Pro Series. So what's a, what is a feature of a, a Misha Mansour signature guitar? So this is that's if we get into if we get into you know as much as you know about cars, I definitely know about guitars. And I was gonna say it's interesting because in the same way that you're only interested with curiosities. That's a seven? I, that's a seven. I could give you a seven if you want. No, please don't. I don't know how to play that. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you a six. I know. I, I went down. A, I was a big guitar nerd for, for a real long while, and not nearly where you're at, but but please explain the, the intricacies of okay, your so, guitar. Okay, so right off the bat, like... Um, I did what, uh, what's called 20 inch radius on the fretboard. It's a super flat fretboard. If you know a guitarist named Alan Holdsworth, like he's a fusion guy, he's one of my biggest influences. I've never heard that name before. I have to check that it's out. Super nerdy, but like like one one of one of a kind guitarist. But he played with a, a flat fretboard like that. I had one of his signatures because I was such a big fan, and like I was like, that's the best thing. If you're playing more technical stuff and you're playing faster stuff, it allows you to get your you you know the action like you can get your yeah. action lower and more consistent. So it's just it makes the guitar basically faster playing. Right, really right. Like right. fast, right? <laughs> it's like putting a supercharger on your guitar, right? So, um, uh, like other guitars that have flat fretboards would be like a Telecaster, right? Nope, like a, no, that's no. very round, very round. That really? Be, so, like, it's a radius, like as if it's a circle. So it'd be like seven or eight inch radius, right? That's very round. Is it the radius from the strings? So, like, yeah, if you yeah, drew an like imaginary if, if you, arch, if you actually look at the at any guitar, you'll see there is a slight yeah. arc, and, and it would effectively draw like a seven inch circle or whatever. On metal guitars, more modern guitars, you'll get like 12, 16 is considered pretty flat. You'll get compound radiuses where uh-huh. it starts. The idea is that like a rounder one will be easier for cording. 
and then like you know shredding and all that is easier on a flatter thing but you'll only see up to 16 but like mine's 20 across the board so it's real flat mm. and it's one of those things that I, I've found and this guitar has been out for a little while well, you know what I'm, I'm a fucking idiot you said across the fretboard didn't you yep I heard a, I heard the bo- I heard body I'm sorry oh, I, no, no, the, no, I was no, thinking no, the face no, of the no, body no, the no, entire no, time no, it's a I'm sorry continue but I'm an idiot yeah, no, yeah. no 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 it's all good it's all good this is this is my realm now so yeah like uh, uh, you know I'm used to answering all this kind of stuff um, the the actual carve of the body, I don't know if there's a shot of the back, but the bottom horn we actually carved out very strategically. I love the shape. This is like called the super. Oh, strap. that looks good from the back. But but it's designed so that you can, so get, you can get upper fret access really in there. There's yeah. a lot of guitars. This you know it's 24 frets. There's a lot of guitars where it's really tough to access those upper frets because of the shape. So we made it oh, so the that wood grain be, on the back of that neck is so that's, gorgeous. That's roasted maple. Wow. So they actually cook what's, the moisture out of it. What's happening up there by the headstock where it changes color? So that's called a scarf joint, and that is something that they do so that the, the headstock can have angle, and they don't have to just cut a massive piece of wood for it to have that. So it's like a, a production thing. Looks but cool. Up, but it ends up being a very... It's a structural thing, but it ends up working very well. Um, I... I play I pick really hard and we we headbang and run around playing live so one of the things was like I was road testing these guitars it took about three years to design the first one just because like I was beating the crap out of them and things were breaking so these are designed they're over engineered if you are the kind of person who will tour around the world in every climate and beat up their guitar on stage this will this will keep up with that you know not every guitar will unfortunately but that was another design uh, thing there um I've got locking tuners there, uh, like even those. on the US, USA. So again, tuning stability, super mm-hmm. easy to change strings. Especially when you're shredding. When you're shredding, you got if you, you got to get that vibrato. I know. You got to get that vibrato in there, and that will, uh, if you don't have a guitar that can handle it, your guitar will go out of tune. I've got my signature pickups in the USA model. Mm-hmm. The, the Pro Series, which is the import model, doesn't have the... The, the bare knuckles are from the UK. They're hand wound in the UK. Oh, show yeah. me some other colors, color, Zach. But those, uh, those, the Ferrari red. I've uh, look up the Ferrari red one. That has, uh, yeah. So that's Matt Ferrari red. Ooh. That was when I had my. Ferrari. Oh, I like the Ferrari. I like Matt red. And that kind did, of that reminds carbon me of my fiber. C5 vet, right, Zach? That color combo, the yeah. red black. Cool. I don't know if you can see the carbon fiber uh, pickup cover. So this, I tried carbon to sneak fiber in. pickup covers. I mean, Very it's not cool. actual carbon fiber because it's a pickup, but like. Oh, etched. look at that! That looks that's great. Red. That looks awesome. I tried to get my like car cues in there wherever I can. Yeah, wherever I can super sneak cool. Them. That's a very subtle uh, touch. Matt I like Red that. looks very good on guitars and does not look as good on cars. I would say. When well, you see Matt Red is tough on a car. What's interesting? What's interesting sick. is like after I did this. Um, uh, Ferrari, the F1 team, they copied me and made their F1 car <laughs> matte red. Obviously designed after this guitar. Bullshit. Well, you copied them. You and sue copy them. No, <laughs> they copied me. We're just gonna. The lawyers will go with that. Okay. You know, but <laughs> I'll, yeah, they can't sue me if I sue them first. But um, no, cool like that. Piece, that was man. the that was the vibe on that one. People keep bothering me and saying like, oh, you should do the the matte yellow, like the mm-hmm. to match the Lambo, which might be an interesting color, but. Um, these are beautiful, man. Yeah, I love this. So this is these are my favorite guitars by design. So the only guitars I'm interested in are curiosities. Uh-huh. Like the things that I have that aren't this are the Morgans of Yeah, guitars. the Morgan yeah. of guitars. So what is the Morgan of guitars? Ukulele. So I've got <laughs> this I I don't I'd say this is beyond a Morgan. Uh, look up Teufel. T e u f f e l. What T e u f f e l? Guess where he's from? F f e l. Um, he probably drives a Porsche. He probably drives a Porsche, yes. Um, what is it? Is it t- Toy oh, that's beautiful. Uh, that's an acoustic so guitar. I have, now, that's not even an acoustic. That's it's electric not? that looks like an acoustic. Now, go to the what? Birdfish. This is the this Teufel, is this is what, what I have. What the fuck what? is that? The yeah, Teufel that's the correct. Birdfish. That's the correct reaction. Is that a guitar? I mean, barely, but it's awesome. It's what sick. does one do with that? So is that like the Ariel Adam yeah. of guitars? I don't know. You know, but like, does, do you just play it like a guitar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it make normal guitar well, it, sounds? It not only makes normal guitar sounds, but the pickups you can adjust in real time in three dimensions so you can adjust the way it sounds because the positioning Holy and all that. the fuck. fuck that thing is awesome yeah it's probably like 25 grand and too. wait does that <laughs> does that on the top right does that rest on your knee is that a knee yeah rest so that's there? where that's where that rests oh that's so cool and that's where the tone comes from so mine is, mine that a tea is kettle? not <laughs> right <That's laughs> i'm serious is that a fucking tea <laughs> kettle on so the that's bottom? the volume <laughs> the tone and the five-way switcher <laughs> there like and it comes with five pickups some are humbuckers some are single coils you can just plug them in uh, so you could swap them out really easily. You mean and those you just, are the tone you just bars. clip them on a rail and move them? Mm-hmm. 
Wow. So this is designed to be this like fully modular thing, and then they've got that's the tone wood. So you know, obviously, like normally the body's made of wood. Well, he's placed it with these two tone bars to the side, and it usually comes with two sets. Like I, mine has like uh, two that are alder and two that are maple. You could do split, split them up, or you know whatever. And that um, is well, so absolutely like, incredible. This has so much. I don't know for people that if, it's basically like if you just took the strings and neck of a guitar and the pickups, got rid of the entire body, yep. and then put two. You know, capital eyes of wood like on one side, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then a kickstand and a tea kettle on the other side. But yeah, so do kickstand those bars like do they do they change the sound because it it, it looks like such in, an insignificant amount of wood compared yeah, to yeah. And guitar. I mean, this is this is where you could get. I, I'd actually wow want to know what the debate is in the car world, but like tone woods are like well these debates that will get heated because there are people that are on one side like it makes no difference no none whatsoever <laughs> and then there are people more like me where I'm like it does make a pretty significant difference and the, the, everything makes a difference you know all the people um, that I know that are very serious about guitar playing say it makes a difference yep yeah, I mean, and, and the thing is, I'm in a unique position because I was designing uh, signature guitar and getting prototypes where I have controls and I have a guitar where just one thing is different, yeah. you know, or the body, we changed the body. Yeah. Even my current guitar, the, they're, the USA, if you get the Ferrari Red, it's it's uh, roasted basswood, which I think sounds great. It's an ugly wood, but it sounds great, very aggressive. Or if you get the flame top, you get roasted mahogany on that one. And they oh. sound fundamental. they sound very different, you know? Um, so I, I feel like I'm in a position to actually say that I've seen the results. Yeah, no, when you say these sound, I mean, I know it's hard to describe a sound. Is it is one warmer than the other? Yeah, so the, the, the basswood is more, uh, it's more balanced. The mids are the way I like it. It's aggressive. It's not necessarily as full. The mahogany is more like vintage voice. It's got more low end to it, which isn't always necessarily what you want. Uh, and it can be, it can actually in a, in a way be also a little bit brighter than the basswood. So it's a bit more scooped in, uh -huh. in a sense. Um, we could we could go down this rabbit hole forever I, and bore I, I'm everybody. I'm interested but. in this kind of stuff, but this weird thing here, this yeah. toyful thing, <laughs> super I, cool. But here's what I'd be worried about. You know how Colin Chapman used to say, "If you made the suspension adjustable, they'll adjust it wrong." Yeah, man, I feel like I could fuck that thing right up. How big of an expert do you have to be no, to understand you don't, you don't how to, to you don't, make it that plays, work? It plays like a normal guitar. It adjusts like a normal guitar. What you could adjust is the pickup position to make it sound like kind of weird, but it'll never sound like bad. Uh huh. Uh, I haven't made it sound bad. I've used it to record. I jam on it. I actually quite like it. And it comes with this crazy art stand. I think you saw it like it, before. I mean, it better. So it actually stands in my living room. Looks looks oh, like a crazy art piece. Absolutely. Which yeah. Most people are like they don't even I'd realize it's a guitar. You know, hundred percent. I would display. Yeah. Oh, and you can. Oh, get. Show, pull up that picture. Of that guy playing it standing up. I was going to ask if you can really play. Oh, that's it Kirk Hammett. Up. Kirk Hammett. Oh, it's Kirk it. Hammett. So he used that he, guy. So he played excuse it. me. <laughs> that guy. Think he's in a band? That guy. <laughs> Fucking Metallica. You know what? I saw them two years ago at the Rose Bowl and I have never in my life seen a more precise set of music. Really? Ever. Oh wow. A every song was absolutely note perfect start to finish. Wow. It was crazy. They're they're a fantastic live band, man. <sighs> it's crazy to think like, you know, they're they're getting there. They've been around for a while and they just put on a great show. What uh what do you think uh what song do you think old Kirk was playing there? Jeez, I wouldn't even know because I haven't seen like I've just seen this picture of him playing it. It's one of these ones that comes up when you look up Teufel, but uh -huh. like I haven't seen him play this guitar live. You know, like yeah. I don't think. It, and dude, I wouldn't take that guitar. Yeah, live. Yeah, it's like you don't travel with this it's thing. It's not. It's not durable. Yeah. You know, like it's not. It's I an mean, art if piece. If you're Kirk Hammett, you know, someone, if you're Kirk someone Hammett, deals with that. Some yeah, someone oh, else. Oh, is will. that the case? Look yep. at that. The case is tiny. It looks like you're carrying a gun. Um, and, uh, and, and there are headless guitars as well. I should probably yeah, so have mentioned small. That. Yep. This is the guitar for the Blastoline brothers. Oh yeah. It looks if they like made a guitar, yeah. this is what they would make. You know Blastoline? I do not know that. Blastoline is, is, is two guys in Oregon. One of them is this dude, Randy Grubb, who we know, who, and they're all just, they're, they're out of their mind and everything they build is the coolest thing you could possibly imagine. It's they they use tank engines, they use bus chassis, they build this these you've heard of Jay Leno's tank car. They built that. Wow. Um that's a that's a car. And every piece is like finished to be shown Dude, and all that. Yeah. Oh, it's they're gorgeous and crazy and like uh, that huge. thing right there is like probably the size of a Super Duty and about 2000 horsepower. Oh my I, god. That bus I drove. Really? Yeah. We what was that like? Incredible. Really? Yeah, because you drive it from the roof. 
Like a boat, like see the see the see. There's like a boat. Yeah, on I the don't roof? even understand what I'm looking at, but now I, I well, see. Well, you're that, looking yeah. in this picture about the of the deco liner, which is the RV in the back with four, three or four of his little scooter designs in the front. He basically took apart Vespas and put these crazy torpedoy body things on them. That's wild. Zach, can you grab another picture of the deco liner that doesn't have the weird things in front of it? I mean, the, that the, that's crazy. And what you're you're supposed you're you supposed can drive to... it from the regular cab like oh, okay. a, like a RV. It's 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 basically an RV, and it's incredible. And you can drive it from the regular cab, or you can climb up that ladder that goes up the rear spine of it and drive it from the roof. Wow! It is the coolest goddamn thing. What does you it can feel like imagine. to drive a car from the roof? It's gotta Amazing. be insane. Like sailing. It's Why? like sailing. <laughs> sailing it's like on the road. It's, yeah, it, it really is. It's like driving a yacht. How hard is it to stay in the in the lane though? Like, is it weird? You know, I don't. You know? I don't really remember. We didn't go very fast. We were going like thirty. Yeah. Um. It was kind. Of, it was like driving a bus. Okay. Because what was really cool was th you would literally. It w this was genius. It was so simple. You would sit you, in the in the regular cab to drive it. You'd quick release the steering wheel. There was then a shaft that you would pull down from the ceiling and just click, click it right on the hub, and it just extended the stock hub right through the ceiling into wow. a steering wheel up there. It was. It couldn't have been any more simple. But you know that reminds me of like some weird Top Gear shit. Yeah. Like where they were like, oh, we'll just um, just connect it. Yeah, but <laughs> not. It wasn't janky. No, of course not. Yeah, of course but it, not. But, and it was. It worked. I, yeah, it inc absolutely incredible. It That's, was the coolest thing ever. I think. I don't know if he sold that thing. I don't know what he did with it. But someone needs to just give him all the money. Randy wow. deserves all the money. Yeah. So that someone is just like I have an extremely clear, clear concept of what I'm gonna do, and no, I'm just he, gonna. He built that. He yeah. He they don't they don't build on order they build it and then wait for someone to show up and buy wow. it yeah yeah so yeah it's very very no, pure like just that. artist just pure can one more time zach the interior of the deco liner oh yeah because that if you think the outside is cool i mean he it's the, the deco liner interior this guy really is one of those people with such like a clear uh vision yes look at that interior Oh my god. Right? That's some Captain Nemo shit. That doesn't even look real. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a weird <laughs> that like, is dream. That is real, yeah. And just the way they integrate the stairs coming and through, the, and the, the curved wood and the ribbing. Welcome yeah. to the boss of the afterlife. We'll be taking you to your yes. dreams now. Yeah, basically, right? <laughs> I believe that. I mean, that. this looks yeah. like Alice in Wonderland school bus. It's super yeah. cool. And the stairs are clear, you know, so you can see out of each one, like at looking yeah, back, which yeah. is really, Man, really so clever. Cool. That's that's really stuff like that. I love where it's just clever engineering. Really, really. Like you had a vision and you worked the engineering mm -hmm. perfectly into it. Yeah. I mean, this is not my style at all, but I respect the crap out oh, of this. Oh god, if I yeah. had, I'd have to have a lot of money. But how much? Well, you probably would. How much is this? <laughs> you know, you I don't. I bet she'd want a million bucks for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I wouldn't you know be surprised if it was more. To be honest, I think something. that's worth it. Like, because you can get there's like airstreams that are three hundred grand. Yeah, like Sprinter yeah, yeah. vans. And yeah. This is just this yeah. is rolling art. It's yeah. so good. It's built on one of those uh, GM RV chassis, like the one from Stripes. No, no, no yeah, the, it's seventy six. Uh, uh, it's a yeah, I think it's a seventy six GMC motorhome. It has an has an Oldsmobile Toronado uh, drivetrain. One of those. Oh, wow. Yeah, one of those. So he took one. He took one of those things yeah. apart, and he uh, and he turned it into that thing. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? I like how the only thing you can recognize from is the, the front one, wheel. By the way, in <laughs> case any, in case you're wondering, go to the second row, all the way in the left, Zach, and pull that picture up. That is when somebody took one to Bonneville, oh, and that is man. a real picture of someone who ran the world's fastest motorhome. I think that guy did 110 miles an hour. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> the scariest 110 anyone's ah. ever done. <laughs> ah. <laughs> the stupidest I just love that ever. spoiler, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's finish up these questions. Oh yeah, sorry, we're getting distracted. Cool. That's, That's all okay. right. Uh, Brett Verby just says he's a big fan, and this is really cool. So he gives a little donation. Thank you, Brett. Um, Todd Friedman asks. Misha, is the next uh, GGD library just going to be rev samples of your performante? <laughs> um, and let's see. Uh, Joe is learning race car on guitar. Wish him luck. Yeah, we named a song Race Car off our first album. Okay. It's probably very speedy. In difficult. case you didn't know, is I it, like cars. Is it hard to play? Do we need to wish him luck? It's 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 sixteen minutes long, so it's Whoa. You know, and it's and it's definitely it's the Nurburgring of It's the Nurburgring. <laughs> it's the Nurburgring. Hundred and seventy seven corners. Damn, there's a, there's a lot of corners on that song. It's it's sixteen uh, it's a, time wow. signature changes. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a, there's a lot. It that song. That song is a handful, literally. So I bet playing music is excellent for the memory. Like if you have to play 
a four minute song or a 16 minute song and you have 10 or 20 of those you're I don't know man show. I'm really stupid so I don't think it is you know and, I, don't and think I think you it's, are. it's feel it's muscle memory it's feel it's, like the thing is no matter how uh, how hard or something because we write just to write and we're like we'll figure it out later right uh, and and you know so because we record the way that we do sometimes the first time we ever play a song is like when we're practicing for for live use you know mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes I'm practicing these oh, songs. Oh, because you record it one one part at a time. Yeah, kind we of just thing. record. It's just it's very much about the composition, you know. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, okay, well, we got to play this live. So as I'm learning it, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I'm like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna play this. <laughs> like this is so hard. But then week one a tour, like by the time you've done it for like a week, week and a half, it's like I am thinking about like where I'm gonna drive my car, like you know, like while I'm playing it, like I'm like off in dreamland, like you're on autopilot. That's it's funny. weird how the brain works like that. So it's just repetition, and it just becomes how it sounds and how it feels like you're not actively when you're driving when you're driving on a track you're not thinking about how much steering input you're putting probably no. when you start you do but like yeah, you, yeah, you're, yeah. you're talking you're like yeah. explaining a car away which yes. i don't understand but like well because there's certain muscle. things i don't have to think about yeah, anymore yeah, it's the same thing it. yeah. it's the exact same thing yeah. so it seems like a lot but you know you just kind of piece it's it the together. same it's the same shit for me i can 15 go. minute song is basically three songs back to back that's the way to think about it. Oh, you that's know? how you that's how you assemble kind that of, in your head. Kind of, okay. You know, so it's like you just right. without with less of a break than you usually have. Yeah. It's more sweaty at the end. Yeah, All right. more sweaty at the well, end. Joe wanted to know how risky it is to buy a 2001 Rentec Mercedes with a 3.8. Uh, oh, an engine board from three to 3.8 from 3.2. That's oh, a, well, that's a oh lot. my god! It's got a. That's not board. That's stroked. Yeah, that's got to be both. It's got to be board. Maybe board and stroked, Jeez. but definitely stroked. I mean. Here's the thing. I don't know how how dangerous, how risky is it? Uh, probably not that risky. If that was a full Rentec built, that is a high quality engineering company. They don't sell junk. They only sell good stuff. Having said that, who knows what happened to it in between when it was built and now? Yep. Um, and so that is the that is the five hundred dollar question. Yeah. I will say that I think it is less likely that that car has had the shit kicked out of it than if it was, say, a Dynan BMW. <laughs> Uh, I agree. It's an automatic, probably, right? I Just agree. by that very nature, it probably has spent less time at Redline. But I gotta think, like you're buying, you're buying a non V eight Mercedes that's been heavily modified. This feels like a game of hot potato, and it is, <laughs> it is almost cold. Like the next time you try to, yeah. I don't know, because it, it's just not a sought after car. I've never platform. even heard of this kit before. Right? This is a this is a kit a power kit for probably a C thirty two AMG. Yeah, that's exactly what's got to be for. Um, weird. I, I mean, mm. it's an oddball. You know, get a get a get a get a P, get a PPI pre purchase inspection. Have them do a compression test on the cylinders to make sure it's all right in there, and. You know, if if it passes the standard PPI muster, I don't see why it would be particularly bad. It might be kind of kind of neat and weird. As long as it works ball. well, because I mean, if you live if you live near Rentec, good. If you don't, you I don't know, know, just make like Florida, Palm, Palm Beach. Yeah. yeah, but like if it has problems, you want to be near the person that made the thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Todd Friedman asked, "Do we have any F one predictions for next year?" Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, do you guys follow F one? Oh, there's some big news that just like just came out. What was the big news? So, uh, do you guys know who Sebastian Vettel is? Yes, yeah. and four time world champion. No, who's that? Okay, well, I don't know. Some <laughs> yes, people don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's leaving Ferrari. Yeah. Oh, really? He's is it because he can't fucking win there at all? Mm. <laughs> And because Charles Leclerc came in and just started to dominate immediately, yeah, like like as a rookie, just just started to dominate, right? Yeah. And um, I don't know where he's going, but there's two obvious candidates for his spot, which are Daniel Ricciardo, who's at Renault. And that's a whole thing, right? That started its own cascade of of silly things, and then Carlos Sainz, who's been this just absolute fucking sleeper. Like I don't know why they aren't. So he's with McLaren. He got probably the least coverage. For how good he did in the season last year because the dude was just like really like in rare form and you know getting the most out of that car and keep in mind that car the year before was like especially at the end of the year like just at the back complete uh, back marker car and then i think they ended up in fourth or, or or fifth or whatever they had a great season so he's the other obvious guy. He's younger and there's the big debate i want ricardo to get it but, yeah because uh, ricardo's funny Ricardo's funny. I like that. I don't Ferrari have to needs watch to the be races. funny. Yeah, I don't have to watch the races anymore. I just watch Drive to Survive now. And yeah, that's, that really go. that really covers the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, there you go. I gotta <laughs> say, on the other day, I was on the elliptical machine, and I was looking for the new episode of The Last Dance, and it wasn't up yet. 
and I saw on the ESPN app that the eSports F1 championship was on yep. ESPN. And I was like, all right, I am going to give this half an hour. And I put it on, and I watched 30 minutes of some F1 drivers, including Charles Leclerc, yep. and some other kind of like random racing drivers, yep. including like the, the kids of a couple racing drivers, yep, yep, yep race uh, at Interlagos virtually and it couldn't have been more fucking boring. It was terrible. See, Absolutely I had terrible. the opposite thing because I just watched the one at, at uh, Barcelona and I loved it. What? And there I was more action. There was more action in like the last few laps of that race than there would be in a, that, that race in real life is the most boring race on the planet. You watch qualifying, you fall asleep and you find out the results the next day because just it'll probably be about the same, right? But like the, the one thing they're doing, they're doing, well, no damage or whatever, right? But um, that's because a lot of people don't know how to handle these. It's not, it's, it's not even <laughs> a ra- sim. They're racing no damage. They're racing no damage. But, but the cars all have balance of power. So no one has an advantage. So now um, uh, uh, George Russell, who was in a Williams, a back marker car, no chance yeah. of anything. And was basically in last place the, the whole time last year. But is probably one of the most talented drivers on the grid. Is racing Charles Leclerc, who's at the top and winning and it's kind of like this wow. this, this interesting yeah. thing and the game is not a sim it's a it's between a sim and an arcade game which has gotten some criticism but you're watching these guys adapt Charles Leclerc came in and just started to dominate he'd never played this game never like practiced it or whatever and just started immediately dominating. but I think these it. pros do a lot of sim training they do it, but, uh, but it doesn't translate because there, there's sim training in these things that are built by by probably by R Factor for Ferrari, and they're taking all the data from their cars, they're creating this, you know, this bespoke simulator, which feeds them data that they need. Right. So it's not even fun. Just it's about like up. data collection. Oh, sorry. It's yeah. about data collection. So this is like a fun game that you can play with a controller. I all like, wait, of those I things can be wheel. true. They're playing with a the wheel. They're but, playing with wheels because they cut to these fucking dudes like houses. Yeah. They got they got like a Twitch yeah. game or whatever. But like, I gotta be honest. I, all of those things you said are true. That's so all true. It was still dull as rocks. I was still wa- I was still watching people play video games in a place that was was not even in front the, of me. Like, the difference I'll say is that like do you do you you watch Drive to Survive, but you don't follow Formula One or, or that I much. Uh, I correct. I don't watch all the races. I will occasionally read race recaps. Right. I will catch a race sometimes and watch it. I'll watch highlights. Yeah, but I, I don't. I'm For not me, a, I yeah. watch from Thursday practice. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, and like even if I miss it, I will I will watch the replay and make sure I stay off the internet so I don't get any spoilers about practice. Okay, and then I watch all the way, to, you know, and I, and I if I get spoilers, that person is dead to me, and I'll block them for life. <laughs> okay. So I love I love F. So you're just happy to have anything. I'm happy honestly. to have anything. Yeah, I just yeah. got the whole season canceled on me the day it was going to start. Okay, literally so you're the comparing day. it to having not having a season you thought you'd have, and I'm comparing it to right. watching my. Michael Jordan on TV right first <laughs> and I'm going yeah okay I, I get why you feel <laughs> yeah. the way that you do but I will take this. I also don't like watching other people play video games right. in general it's really? a good thing I yeah it's a thing I don't like Fair even, enough. even when it was like we were playing video games like in high school we played GoldenEye N64 like if it wasn't my turn to play I found it terrible totally I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit there yeah. and watch the other people play I'd go do something it's else always the but worst. to be fair I do play the game so then when I'm seeing how these pro drivers are taking their lines I'm like oh that's interesting oh you can cut there and not okay. get a penalty oh you know so there's something like I do I, I, I sim race a lot. I oh, love it. Do you have it. a rig? I do. Oh. I have a really serious rig. It started like How a year. How serious? Like motion? Not motion okay. yet, but I probably will. But like <laughs> that motion, I've gotten all the things that will help me get faster. Motion won't help you get faster. It'll just help you get more immersed. But VR rig, a direct drive wheel, uh. like good pedals, like a rig with no flex whatsoever. And yeah, I've been racing a lot. I've, I've been getting my race craft up. Like that's a whole thing. Like I sucked at racing. Yeah, clean. race race craft is a thing. Race craft yes. is hard, man. And learning how to defend and all that to yeah. make your car as wide as possible. Like you learn that lesson the hard way. It's like, oh wow, like I just got overtaken really stupidly right now, you know? Yeah. And uh, and I love it. And I play online with friends. It feels like you're at a track day with your friends, you know, with no consequences. And it, it's a, it's a really good time. So when you're in that world, watching other people play it is like educational. If sure. you're not in that world, it's just like, oh, I don't want to watch this dude play video games. I don't yeah. watch people play video games I don't care about. You know, listen, you don't listen to metal. Yeah, I don't listen to metal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch people play their uh, their metal I, music I've on gotten, stage. <laughs> during during the eight weeks of quarantine, I took the Xbox from this studio that it sat there for two years. It was not touched. I brought it to my house. I have a controller, and I've gotten probably halfway through Forza Seven. 
in the last eight weeks. Your first problem is that you're trying to play Forza 7 oh, with a controller. With a because, controller. Yeah, that, the game is unplayable with a wheel oh, for yeah, some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. Like, it's programmed wrong, but it's, like, <laughs> unplayable. Like, everything <laughs> with spins With a controller, out. it's what it's whatever. It's, it's a great game. I love it with a controller. I love I love all racing games. GT Sport's a good one. I w- I've been playing I with played, the straight I played a Seto Corsa at my friend's got a really nice sim, and I play yeah. a Seto Corsa there, and they have the LA Canyons in a Seto it. Corsa. It's amazing. You know what else they have? They have singers now. Oh, really? Someone made a singer mod, and it is incredible. Really? So you take singers through the LA Canyons, and it's like, this is amazing. We use, uh, we've got my Countach in a Seto Corsa, so I have like three or four vodka drinks and go drifting my Countach virtually on Angela's Crest. It's the best. How, how do you feel? How do you feel it compares to the real the real car? Well, I'm not willing to break traction in mine. <laughs> so, so if mine, I should say that if mine were to drive like that, if I break traction, well, hot damn, yeah. that, is, that, that is good. Um, uh, but no, actually, I think it's 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 pretty good. It's a it's a pretty pretty do- solid representation of what the car is at and my friend sim has a uh, a shifter a yeah which, I, which shifter, I have as well which yeah. you can set for dog leg which is oh. what the countach is oh yeah and so it becomes very realistic yeah you know that way and that's yeah. vr as well right he has vr i don't like it because mm. i get dizzy after really? five or six minutes he's also got the three screens right. i like the three screens okay yeah I like i'm i'm all that's vr problem, i'm all though. vr if if I'm not seated, I will get the motion sickness. But the more I do it, the less it affects. Yeah, me. I, maybe if I did um, it a bunch more, I'd get used and, to and it. And now but. seated, I'll do like four hour stints. With oh like, yeah, you know, with no problem. And it's and it's very hard to go to a screen because you have depth perception and you know how much yeah, driving yeah. is looking. You know, you yeah. have to look in the right direction, and, and you don't really get that on a screen. So VR is awesome. I just uh, my eyes start to hurt and get I get dizzy. After there is four also minutes. something else. I don't know how old the VR system. I have one of the newer ones. They have higher refresh rates, and the higher the refresh rate, the less motion sickness you will get. Oh. I'll, so, try, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try the new one. I'm. I'm. I'm not opposed to it. I'll I'm, try. I'm going to slowly like, win. Win you over, and then you can help. Dude, I like playing win, racing sims. You can, you like can convince playing. Johnny to, just, to to try it at, at some point. Then we'll oh, race. Is he, is he pure no? He was pure no. Oh, he was, I was like. Yeah. I was like, dude, it's, it's sick. You know, we're Bro, 14. Well, he's got They're so fucking fun. Four press cars. Like, that's true. That's true. Yeah. If I if I had four press cars, I'd be like, yeah, this is stupid as well. <laughs> All right. Zach, Fair enough. Let's get through these. Sorry. Carl Vogel had a response about the um the Zinger fuel source thing. And he just says, it's um, it's very energy intensive to capture uh, CO2. Oh. It's only carbon neutral using clean, renewable energy. Plus, it uses metals similar to a catalytic converter, but it uses a lot more of them. He's looking for a patent for us, which is good. I mean, every, nothing's free. I think right. that's just we're, we're trying to figure out what is the best th- energy source in a lot of ways. And I like that people are still just creatively thinking about it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for the clarification. Yeah, definitely. Um, Joe Mama uh, asked Misha, what is the best way for a new musician to get into the industry and get noticed? Oh, boy. Trying to get famous. Oh, boy. Trying to get, <laughs> trying to get girl side in the uh, DM. The first, first thing is don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's, I say to tough, everybody man. too. It's tough. Look, like I got into this. Like I'm gonna tell people the things they don't want to hear. I, my band is where where it is, and uh, I am where I'm at. Like so much of that is because of luck, sheer dumb luck. What you do with it, the fact that we treat the band like a business, the fact that we try to maximize our opportunities. And, you know, that we work hard. All that stuff is, a, that's standard. Everyone who's playing this game is doing that. So the real variable is luck, unfortunately. We did get very lucky. Like, we write very genuinely. I have no idea why people like our music. They didn't at first, and then, then they started to like it. Like, I had no control over that. Um, it's, it's, it's so many bands want to do it. It's a fun job, so everybody wants to do it. doesn't pay a goddamn thing. Still, my band doesn't make very much money, uh, but something I enjoy. So be ready for that. If you're going to get into the music industry, have your income streams ready. Like start diversifying early. It's the best advice I could ever give you. Because if you're going to rely on the band, even if it gets bigger to like uh, support you, like you will live the worst life. Well, dude, <laughs> I mean, we're looking at right now. I've, I, I've, there's, there's like, there's some fucking rappers on Instagram that are all like, get ready to see some garage sales. Yeah. Like, cause like, you know, I get, you know, I guess these guys really rely on, on touring yep. and yeah. they, they live as if there's another gig next week. Yep. You know, it's, that's that, that hustler lifestyle. And you know, you, so if you, I, if you're I have dumb, a lot of friends, I have a lot of friends who are very sure. directly affected. You know, now uh, the, I mean, nobody expected all fucking live music to be canceled for six months nope. or a year. It would probably be, probably yeah. be a year and the It'll pay probably that, be longer i mean you can speak to this more but like the pay the money people make from 
song sales has been it seems like it's been reduced you know Nothing. from c tapes to cds to digital it kept getting reduced so then live touring was how musicians made yep the bulk of their money so so this is what happened like a, like once streaming became a thing um the the market started to get so saturated with touring so actually strategically i spoke with the band and our manager i was like hey like i want to pull back on touring because one, it'll make us less uh, reliant on it, and mm -hmm. two, because you gain this thing where the, it was impossible to compete. There's all these tours. I want people to feel like if we're coming into town, you better come to ours because it might be two years before you see us again. Mm. But there's bands out there that didn't have the luxury of that because they relied so much on touring in income. It's like, well, even though it's not right to tour and even though we, we've kind of over toured this album, I've got bills to pay. So right. going out on a headlining run, you know, and you'd see sometimes their, their guarantees would stagnate or go down. And it's it's a tough spot to be. I would never fault a band for doing that. I, I get it. But there's just hey like, man, Mick Jagger had to get married again. Again, he's got to right? pay for some shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's just, but it, it's it's true. It's like no one thought that like, hey, like tomorrow just you, you're not going to tour for, for a while. Mm. So anyone who's relying on that, you know, got, got really screwed. Again, I'm okay because of pure dumb luck. It just so happens that my businesses for now are doing okay. Maybe they won't be in six months. Maybe I'll be in, in big trouble. Who knows? But yeah. like, this is the reality of this stuff. It's all extremely volatile. My life is very volatile. I, I, you know, thanks to my parents as well, I'm aware that I could lose all of this tomorrow. So, you know, it's that, that wonderful Jewish guilt all the way in, in the back of my head. But like, it does keep you a little bit grounded. And, you know, this this has made me realize like, yeah, you, you got to be very careful with this stuff. So getting back to the question at hand, you know, if you want to do it, play live. This is the thing no one does. They, they all expect like their social media presence to be everything. It's like, how do I build a big channel? It's like, dude, like, I mean, I have a label. I won't sign you unless I know that you're like a sick live band and that you really bring in, that you're cool on tour and that you can hack touring. Mm -hmm. you know how many bands go out there? They're like, yeah, I want a tour. And then they do one tour and it's like, you will never survive another <laughs> tour. Your band will break up and you all hate this, you know? <laughs> and, it, and the only way you find out is by actually going and doing it. So get out there and do it if that's too hard go and do merch or be a guitar tech like yeah. get on the road. there are ways to get on the road just people don't want to take advantage of it yeah. like you'd probably say oh you get in the uh, automotive uh, industry I don't know how you do it now but probably back in the day you just sweep someone's floor be like yeah let me do coffee you runs know, for you people okay. can people you, they still do that they yeah. do still do it's that probably the best we way we have in. people who own shops coming in here all the, all the time and that's basically what they say yeah. I mean pretty much yeah. well because I, I have stuff it's like success stories of this like that's happened with my band like uh, like a, a guy now who like runs a venue like started out as our merch guy yeah and he started out as our merch guy because he was next to our current merch guy and he was just a nice guy yeah. and I, <laughs> he was seated he was like yeah and and our merch guy at the time was like i think i want to do lights we're like okay so you got any recommendations for a merch guy well the guy next to me was real nice and i was like is he cool yeah all right sold yeah sold. And then he worked his way up to tour manager and then eventually like uh, started running a venue. It's like, yeah. it's crazy. He's played with bands, you know, because once you're in the scene, you know everybody. So that's the hack that nobody actually wants to take advantage of is like, do merch. I'll tell you a little secret about doing merch. Um, because of Square and tips, merch guys make more money than anybody. That's actually a, a very interesting. Like, the they'll tips. make more money than I will. Because people just, they see that it's tip the guilt button, tip. they just see the, the guilt, guilt tip. tip. They, the, the good guys are good at it, because they'll be like, all right, and they'll just turn it, and then there'll be the tip thing there. And you don't want to be that guy who doesn't tip, you know? Yeah. Back in the day, you'd get like a couple bucks or whatever. Ever since Square, dude, I swear to God, merch guys are the best paid do dudes on Twitter. Yeah, because nobody wants to click zero. Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't want to click zero. Awesome. What a so, good, so, yeah, there'll, good be, there'll be days that like yeah you know we have a good merch day i'm like yeah cool and they're like yeah i got 500 bucks in tips tonight i'm like, Jesus like we Christ. sold 500 dollars in t-shirts yeah right? I'm like, <laughs> like, like, can we get a cut of your tips yeah, but like, um, so yeah there, there's there's ways in it's not the way that you'd expect but if you want real advice do that and diversify your income from the beginning yeah. be there yep if they you want to apply that to cars physically be there yep and that's the same thing, the live thing. Like you won't you won't start your car channel by like, oh, how do I get my U my YouTube views up or whatever. No. It's like you got to go out there and like you got to make things. Yeah, you got to mm -hmm. make things. Yeah, yeah. Um, Anthony Kloon uh, said is a he's looking at getting a 2010 Pro Charge Velociraptor with 26,000 miles on it for 33 grand. He says, is it a good buy and will it hold its value better than standard Raptor? Which is no. why earlier I looked up. Raptors. It will not. A modified Raptor will hold its value worse than a stock Raptor. If you care about oh, that. Oh, is a Velociraptor a modded Raptor? Did you say Velociraptor? He said pro pro charged, pro -charged supercharged Vel Raptor Vel is what he said, right? right? He wrote Velociraptor. I 
Well, Hennessy doesn't use pro chargers, so it's not a Hen- it's Hennessy Velociraptor. If it's a Hennessy branded one, yes, it does have better resale. I'm it, sorry for everybody yeah. who's going to get mad because I said that and they don't <laughs> like fucking Hennessy, but that's true. It's a brand name, um, and Hennessy doesn't use pro chargers though, so uh, I'm not really sure exactly what you've got. If what you've got is just a modified Raptor, you know. It is what it is. That's low miles. 26,000 miles is low for a 2010. Well, that's what's weird is like I'm looking at Auto Tempest, uh, and all of the trucks, well, there's, oh, well, there's nothing with that low miles. All the trucks that are popping up in that price range, kind of like 25 grand to 30, all have over 100,000 miles on the clock. Yeah. So did he say he, did how, how cheap did he say this thing was? He said 26,000 miles on it for 33 grand. I mean, if that's is it a true, salvage title? you should just yeah. There's there either something's off because that seems very low. That seems too low, or um, the person who's selling it knows it's worth less because it's modified. But if it checks out, then it will probably hold its value okay because you're paying under market price, right? Ish. Yeah, I mean, you may have found someone that just really needs to get rid of this car because, you know, this is. I'm looking at a, a seventy thousand mile. Uh, sorry, twenty ten Raptor with seventy thousand miles, and they want twenty eight five. Yeah. So that's only you know four grand shy of where you are, and has double the mileage. Yeah. So something is a little fishy something's there. a fish, or or or, or, or they may the have times. a problem. Sometimes, like it's now, true. now there that's are true. some people unloading some. Yeah, some cars. it's a big. Sometimes. It's true. Downturn. The kind of person to put a pro charger on a Raptor and then <laughs> not drive it anywhere is the kind of person. <laughs> he yeah. like he like put the pro charger on the. Yeah. Day before, right? The, the yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, look, someone else's loss could be your gain. Totally. Yeah. Check that thing out because that's under market price. Yeah, that yeah. is definitely in like the scary, like like, hey, something's yeah. up here. You but know? make sure it's all installed. General advice: right. a modified Raptor will hold its value worse than a stock Raptor. Yep. Um, hold, all cars. A modified blank will hold its value worse than a stock blank. Because the, the shopper will VF, go VF Performante. You know, Where are we at on that? Well, the virtue of that is that you can go back to stock. That's True. the virtue, is True. you put it back to stock, and then maybe you can sell the kit to somebody else for a, for a percentage of what yeah, you, you paid for it. Yeah, you don't take the whole it. hit on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, good, yeah, point. yeah. good point. Uh, and last question, someone just says, thoughts on Mick Gordon. Oh, okay. So I don't know if you guys know, uh, you guys follow uh, Doom, video game Doom, Doom Eternal? No. no. So he's a, do you know about the Doom series? It made this like, come... I remember, I remember the like first one. Doom from like fucking... 486 computer exactly yeah okay so it came back in 2016 like sort of rebooted uh and it's like very fast-paced action game awesome game it had this soundtrack by this dude mick gordon he's he's a really good dude and incredible composer he did like super heavy metal soundtrack mm-hmm. for this game like and like the, the the running joke was like oh yeah the new mick gordon album comes with doom game for free you know oh, that's funny. <laughs> so and it, and it kind of was that like like the the music was half the game they came out with the latest version just now doom eternal and he did the music again it's fantastic but there's a whole bunch of controversy because like i don't know exactly what happened but there was some like like uh, Id or Bethesda or whoever whoever uh, hired him uh, and him had some disagreements on the mix and on whatever and on deadlines and whatever. I don't know what the actual story is, uh-huh. but he basically announced that he's not going to um, uh, work with them anymore. And they they also put out a statement. It's one of those things where you're like, wow, like because this was the uh, most perfect, yeah, yeah, yeah. most perfect it's, marriage. It's a of mutually things. beneficial agreement. And everyone's and then super like, bummed. Oh, dude, everyone's yeah, so fun. bummed. They're just like, I hope they work it out because it's it would be such a bummer. Does for this them not dude to work make and play music elsewhere besides? No, his he's video a composer. Games? He's a, and oh. and he's really really good. I've I've gone a bunch of people be like, hey, do you want to compose for that? And it's like, well, it's not that simple. They have to ask me. But also, the dude's so good <laughs> yeah. at what he does. Have you ever thought about composing <laughs> for that? It's like, well. Y- you yeah, ever thought about being a billionaire? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Let's, I get let's that do it. Dumb shit all the but, time. Uh, <laughs> you ever think about reviewing a Sharon? <laughs> like, nah, no, why? no. <laughs> hey, thanks for that, hey, man. You That's guys a should idea. get uh, Lewis Hamilton yeah. on, on the podcast. <laughs> that yeah. would that would be great. Yeah, why don't you just go ahead and do that? Either. Anyways, so yeah, why don't I go ahead and do the soundtrack? Uh, but even if I got offered it, man, the guy's so good at what he does. Like, I don't think I could touch. Oh. Uh, and he's so iconic with that. So, anyways, that's is it the kind of thing where I want to like go find the soundtrack and listen to it outside the game? Yeah, you'd be like, dude. Do you want to get? Your, are you working out ever? Like, do it then. Oh, it's it'll good, get you pumped. Oh, okay, it'll cool. get you pumped, dude. All right. It's it's uh, it's legitimately good music on its own with the game and the footage. It's like wow, that's right. perfect. And one thing I was really grateful for. Metal's always been this kind of 
you know, subgenre. It's been this kind of underdog genre, right? And the mainstream doesn't like it, but Doom was a mainstream game, at least in, in gamer circles. It was yeah. a huge success. I played Doom all through, like, whatever it was, middle school, high school? Right, and but then they didn't really do anything good, and then when they came back, it made this huge splash, and it legitimized metal. Like, no one was using metal in their soundtracks. No one was really, like, there was just other stuff, electronic, orchestral, mm -hmm. whatever, right? And then this dude not only comes out with a metal soundtrack, but, like, a, a, a really good one. Like, a full-on, like, you're a metal dude, you you get it, soundtrack. And people like it. Cool. So it opened it up, and now you see all these other companies kind of going for that Mick Gordon sound. They're like, oh, well, that worked for Doom. Oh, we should do that for our game. Mm. So it kind of opened up uh, metal in the gaming community and legitimized it. And with what I would consider, you know, you could almost see like, oh, he's a metal guy. Like he'd be a, a snob about it. Like, uh, you know, it's not real metal. No, like this is like legitimately oh, great cool. music. Oh, check so that out. Make I would board. recommend right, it. Cool. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, I think that's uh, that sounds like a show to me. Yeah, it's a good show. Great there. show, man. Great to meet you. First, great to meet first you time well, having well, a person too. in the studio other than Zach and I in two months and six days so so uh t today what's the date today so we're gonna all gonna be sick and right yeah, so <laughs> let's, say, let's, let's check in oh, let's god. let's see how bad this you is you are patient zero. Oh god anybody wants to uh, kiss this mic yeah right you know what's, yeah. you know what there's something really funny <laughs> i swear to god this is totally true you see that box next to you on the table yeah the second he hits unspeed on that i'm disconnecting that microphone and putting it in a box because i sold it this afternoon <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. I shit you not. Uh, I fucking sold that mic. <laughs> I warmed it up for you. Did you enjoy it. Uh, that's a good one. Tell me how I smell. <laughs> uh, uh, get hail, Stan. Yeah, get hail, Stan. Get hail, Stan. Or just listen. You don't, people don't get things anymore. Just stream just, hail, just Stan. Stream it. Just stream it. Do the stream. Stream you know? hail, Stan. And when and when Misha can play live again, I will. I want to be there. Yeah. I want to go yeah. see Yeah, you, you guys can get guest listed. I would love That'd it. Be sick. Love it. The, the, the LA shows are a good time. Where man. do you play when you play in LA mainly? We played, uh, what was it called? Uh, on on uh, the Wiltern. We played the oh, Wiltern yeah. last time. Good place. Oh, cool. That was, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Good, good. It was packed. It was good vibes, man. All right, cool. Good vibes. So. Hopefully soon. Yeah. Until then, stream hail Stan, everybody. Yep. Misha Mansoor, that's the Smoking Tire podcast for us. I don't think, Zach, are we recording the rest of this week? Oh, we do. We have a crew show with Vinny. At the end of the week, because Vinny's coming back. What day? I think that's Thursday. Thursday, we got Vinny, Vinny Russo. Thursday, we have Randy from Bring a Trailer. Thursday, we have Randy from Vi Bring a Trailer featuring Vinny Russo. <laughs> 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 no, actually, Randy's going to be super interesting. I want to hear what the last two months have looked like at Bring a Trailer. I want him to give us the picture of that. So that's going to be cool. Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, Randy Nonnenberg, uh, the owner and founder of Bring a Trailer. Misha, thanks for coming in, homie. Thanks for having me. Safe travels in that Lambo. I want that odometer going up. Rapidly, it will be. I promise. You have to put more miles on that than I put on my Lamborghini. Deal. That's 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 the rule. Deal. If you do that, we happy. All right. The Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, and ideally something to say. See y'all later.